All right. Welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green live. I am Jason Green, and uh, fortunately, I am live. Welcome to all my YouTube friends. It's good to see you all again. By see, I mean myself in this uh, computer screen, but I'm sure you guys all look great and you are ready for another great show. We've got a lot going on today. I'm going to tell you about all the upcoming guests, of course, of course. And uh, then also we're going to open brand new vinyl from the band Tough. Brand new uh, vinyl. What goes around comes around 30th anniversary. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, and we are also going to talk to Mark Alexander Erber, who is the president of Golden Robot Records. He's going to be here live in just a little bit. And, uh, and he will answer your questions. We're going to talk about what a record label does these days, why you need one. We're going to talk about the year in music in 2021 and what to look ahead to in 2022. We're going to talk about all that and more right after this. All right. All my YouTube friends, uh, we'll pick up where we last left off. The last time uh, we saw each other was on my birthday. And I thank everyone for your birthday wishes and support and, and uh, uh, super chats and super stickers and all those other uh, things. So, um, and, and I, I celebrated my birthday at the Cosmopolitan Hotel uh, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we, we did a little live a virtual uh, birthday party showing you um, uh, the view and things like that. So, um, so, so I'm going to talk a little bit about where I've, what I've been up to, and then I'm going to bring in you guys and we're going to talk about, uh, uh, um, all well, the other things are going on, but so I want to point out. So after uh, I had a lovely Thanksgiving and, uh, I got a little sick on Friday, I had a health issue, uh, was not from food or anything like that. And, uh, but I wasn't feeling so well. I'm a diabetic. So I had to go to the hospital, uh, get a test uh, for the, the thing that everyone has to get, uh, occasionally. Uh, uh, and I don't mean uh, VD, but, uh, and I was okay. Um, and so, but I had some other things, some chest pains and some things you do when you get to be my age, um, and you're diabetic, you have to get them looked at. Luckily, um, uh, I'm all right. So, uh, I got a call from Stephen Piercy of RAT. He asked me if I would come out and tour manage some uh, shows for him, literally in two or three days. Um, I would be just coming home right now from those shows, but uh, as you may know, they were postponed. Um, we were going to fly into Pittsburgh and then Buffalo, and then I believe Syracuse, and then after that we were going to go to uh, wrap it up in Massachusetts and fly back to Las Vegas, where Stephen Piercy and I both um, live. Uh, unfortunately, Stephen's uh, uh, fiance was not feeling well, and later Stephen wasn't feeling well, and he did test uh, positive. And so um, things had to be put on hold. I will tell you, though, people are so funny. And I'm going to read you a comment that I saw, because I can't not read this. Uh, it just shows you how the world is so screwed up right now. And so um, let me find this for you guys. Sorry, I didn't prepare. Uh, as you guys know, I'm usually so uh, organized and uh, all right, maybe you know I'm lying. But let's see here. Where are my notes? I had notes for this. You guys talk amongst yourself while I, uh, oh, I think I got it. I don't know. That's not it. I, you know, I love reading you guys lunatic people's comments, but this time I don't think I can find it. Uh, would have been good if I prepared. Now, oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. I won't read this guy's name. But so uh, they had to announce that those shows would be postponed, and they are going to be postponed. And I hope if I'm coming to one of your cities with Stephen Pierce that I'll see you. Anyway, here's what this guy, uh, his feelings on Stephen announcing that he was sick. Jesus Christ, I need to stick to current music. All of these fucking old geezers keep postponing their shows and their tours. F this and F you. You old rockers who keep using COVID as an excuse to postpone, cancel shows that aren't selling well, need to just F off already. I value my money. Unlike Piercy, I never had much money. So I value every dollar I make. When I spend my hard-earned money for a concert on a certain date, I better get it. 
And yes, I am entitled to that as I paid for the experience. Thank God he didn't pay for the Bali Bots or Rat experience. Uh, but you effers, Stephen, Motley, Kiss, etc., think it's an effing game, evidently, to play with other people's money? F all of you for that. And dude, really? The effing day right before the first my show? Eat shit. So that's what the guy had to say. Now, I can assure you that Stephen tested positive and was sick and wanted to play those shows more than anything, uh, but it was not the responsible thing to do, obviously, and uh, he wasn't, uh, you know, come on. So uh, he wasn't, uh, wasn't because of low ticket sales. Those shows have been all rescheduled, and this guy would get his show, but it just shows you how unreasonable people can be. So anyway... I look forward to, uh, you can go to Stephen Piercy's website. I think it's called officialstephenpiercy.com. And uh, maybe I'll be uh, maybe out by you and we can chat. I have in my hands the uh, brand new, uh, uh, a, a, well, it's a package, uh, it's a box. I'd show you this side, but it has my address on it. And I don't want you guys um, all rushing over to my house uh, at once at least. But if you'd like to come over one at a time, we can do that. I like new records. I like to look at them. I like to hold them. I don't really like to play them, though. I'm not a really a record guy. I'm not going to lie. But there has been an emergence. Is that a word? Emergence? Reemergence? Reemergence. People have been buying records again. I never thought I'd see it. I wasn't really that upset when it went away. But I know a lot of people were. Now, vinyl albums are the ultimate um, collector's item. And, uh, and, and later today, we're going to have the president of Golden Records, uh, Robot Records on. So... Here we go. This is a nicely packaged, by the way, by Stevie Rochelle of the band Tough. So here we go. It comes in a nice uh, record box. they got a nice protective cardboard. Uh, and then here is the CD. I got both versions. I have all the formats now. Here is uh, Tough. And this is what goes around, comes around. This is a remastered 30th anniversary. I have heard the remastered files, but now I'm glad to own the CD. And then this right here, and we're going to open this up together. I'm going to try to make sure you can see it through the lights. This is the vinyl copy. It is pretty cool. I know I sound ignorant, but I can't imagine that this record came out on vinyl uh, the first time. Could be wrong. If Stevie's watching, I'm sure he'll let us know, or if someone else is watching, I should probably turn your comments on so I can see. But uh, all right, here we go. Uh, this is the, the this is the, the record. And it looks good. And it has a gatefold, which is pretty amazing. And I was going to say, I was disappointed that he didn't sign the cover to me, but he was nice enough to sign that. Jason, Sin City This, Stevie Rochelle. And, uh, and so how cool is that? And by the way, if you guys want one of these signed, you can go to uh, the, web, the Tough website or RLS Records. Uh, it's available much available everywhere, I think. Let's just look at it a little bit more. There's the track listing. And this thing, it feels nice, and we should look at the vinyl also. Don't you think we should look at the actual vinyl? Hold on, we're going to do that. I'm not uh, I'm not so uh, professional with this, but I do want to point out uh, where you can get this thing, because that's, that's important. Hold on. I'm looking at my plugs, but Listen, you can buy the damn thing anyway, all right? And he'll sign it for you. And he does a very nice job shipping it. And so in this side, you get a little uh, get a little sleeve. It's pretty cool. All the lyrics. All the all the lyrics right there. This really, I, I got to tell you, this brings me back to the old days of uh, vinyl. And then there's that. So you got a whole sheet in the one record this this thing probably has a name but uh, you know what i'm saying and then over here is the actual vinyl and then let's take a look what color the vinyl is that looks like black to me looks like classic black vinyl remastered looks great you can see my uh, screen there my, my secret notes uh, you see how organized i am and uh yeah i think this is pretty cool and i think you guys should go get one so uh, go over to toughcds.com. I'm going to put the link in the description for the people who uh, 
one of the pictures went up. And, you know, I got to think that an item like this is not going to be around, um, you know, forever. I don't think that these things are going to get reprinted. I think you got the, uh, I think you get the thing and then you move on, you know, uh, the 30th anniversary. And so I think these things are going to become uh, quite a collector's item. So I recommend you, uh, you pick one up. I'm looking right now just to make sure that I, yeah, toughcds.com. Tough is spelled T-U-F-F. And CDs is spelled CDS, toughcds.com. And uh, yes. So anyway, check it out. And, uh, uh, and there it is. Tough. Stevie Rochelle has done more than anyone I can think of with you know, a smaller band. You know, they weren't playing stadiums and keeping it, uh, keeping it relevant, keeping them talking about it and putting out product. How, how cool is that? So anyway, that's available. Now. Let's talk about upcoming guests, right? Everyone wants to know about the guests. I have to overpronunciate the guests. Uh, if you're a member of my Patreon, you have already received my brand new interview with Johnny Monaco of Enough's Enough, formerly of Enough's Enough. And that is, uh, and you guys are watching it. You're watching it ad free. And you're watching it uninterrupted. And, uh, and that is for my Patreon. So if you haven't signed up for my Patreon, uh, please do so. You can find that link in the description of all my uh, videos. Anyway, um, and you'll get all kinds of cool benefits, like watching the videos before everybody else and asking questions of the uh, of the guests. So on uh, Friday, the rest of the world, the millions and millions of people watching right now, will be able to watch my interview with Johnny Monaco. It is a good one. It's probably some dirt in there, uh, as they as the kids as the kids say. And, uh, and, you'll, and you can watch that. And then also, um, okay, and then the week after that, my interview is with G. Tom Mack. Do you guys know G. Tom Mack? Do you know what song G. Tom Mack is best known for? G. Tom Mack was once known as Gerard Thomas McMahon before he became G. Tom Mack. And he had an iconic single from a very famous movie in the 1980s that movie was called the lost boys and the song was called cry little sister he's working on a musical a lost boy story it's a musical about the uh lost by lost boys and i'm trying to read your messages and, and talk at the same time it's a lot on me and uh anyway and he's got that and he also had some really other great stuff in his career he wrote a song for Kiss. I know you guys all uh, love Kiss. I see it right here. Is That You by Kiss? Yeah. He wrote that song. And then uh, he worked with Tommy Bolin, legendary um, guitar player. And he's, so anyway, he's, he's on. Uh, we recorded it yesterday. He'll be on next week. And uh, if that's not enough for you, uh, and I can't imagine uh, that uh, you wouldn't be thrilled with that alone, I've got some other people coming up. Uh, uh, oh, uh, just spoke to him yesterday. Kelly Nichols of L.A. Guns will be here or Riley's L.A. Guns, whatever you want to uh, say. And Riley's L.A. Guns is on Golden Robot Records. We will be talking to the president of Golden Robot Records in a little while. So he's coming on. He's going to tell us about the new Riley's L.A. Guns record. I haven't seen Kelly Nichols interviewed very often, so I think uh, this could be a good one. And then uh, Cher Ross from the band Vixen. We have to reschedule a couple of times. And Rob Afuso from Skid Row, the most uh, infamous of all the reschedulers. I, every week he's rescheduling. So maybe he's finally going to uh, do it before year's end. And uh, and so there's that. And uh, I want to make sure that, uh, that I point out, you know, I this channel is doing great. This is the fastest growing channel of its kind. I say it all the time. I'm happy to brag. It's because you guys support it. It's because we don't beat around the bush, so to speak. And I think people uh, 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 like this. I can tell because in under a year, we have close to a million views and we have uh, 8,400 subscribers. I set heavy goals for myself, hefty goals, whatever they say. I want to have uh, 10,000 subscribers and a million views. Do you think we can make that happen? Well, it's up to you guys. Uh, tell your friends. People always comment. Uh, why don't you have more subscribers? Well, I don't know. Maybe we got to spread the word. Although I will tell you, I do have more subscribers than people who've been doing this for five, 10 years. So 
um, it's all uh, uh, you get. It's all how you view it. It's all how you look at it. Um, anyway, I, I'm glad you guys are here, and I'm glad you guys are supporting. And please continue to spread the word about this channel so that we can uh, bring in big interviews next year. We also will have uh, uh, this this Blackie Lawless from Wasp uh, is allegedly. I never believe anything until it happens. Like I just drank water, I can prove that. And uh, and then uh, Tony Martin from Black Sabbath, some discussions about that, all kinds of stuff. I'm always out to make you guys uh, happy and bring you the best in guests. Um, and so I'm just taking a look at some of your comments. Uh, and uh, hey, K Bear, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate people who uh, support the channel. I mean, listen, just by watching, I appreciate you, but. If you want to help like that, that's great too, because uh, this is a full-time job. Believe it or not, believe it or not, just sitting around in front of the old Christmas tree asking people questions. I know it sounds easy, but uh, uh, it's not always. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I could be on the road to the right now. I don't got time for for everything. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, I got. I'm set up for Christmas, as you guys can see. The Christmas tree is out. It is ready. And if you look over here, the Clark Griswold Christmas uh, Vacation Sign Jersey is ready. And then over here, and uh, Icon. I know everyone wants Icon, by the way. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm going to get Icon. Listen, you, 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 you tipped with the Super Chat. The very least I can do is get Icon. And you can see some more of my illustrious uh, uh, Christmas display. All right. That's a good angle right there. And so anyway, uh, thank you uh, for the compliments for Christmas and for my tree. And uh, and I talked about my birthday a little bit, Tony, uh, at the beginning of the show. My, my birthday itself was great. I did go watch Christmas Vacation on the Cosmopolitan uh, Marquee at an ice skating rink. And my friend from Los Angeles joined me. And we had fun. We went out and uh, ate every day. And uh, that's what people do, right? They eat. You know, we had good food, and we went for walks, and uh, people walked to. We had a good time. Favorite Ramon song? All right. I wasn't going to take questions, but that's a good one. It changes for me a lot. Chinese rocks, um, you, you know, is, is definitely up there. Um, I uh, play that one a lot. I know a lot of people credited it to the Heartbreakers, uh, but uh, and the Heartbreakers version is amazing, but I consider Ramon's song written by Dee Dee Ramon. Uh, I like Commando. I like the harder stuff, 53rd and 3rd. Um, I, li I like the, I mean, I love all the Ramones songs, my favorite band of all time, but uh, I like the heavier Dee Dee Johnny songs for the most part. And I know, I, uh, uh, Dan Wexler from Icon. I have not forgot. I am now going to go out there and research. And maybe I'll be turned on to something that I've been missing out on for all these years. Um, Anyway, birthday was great, and I was thankful that you guys were able to spend some of it with me. Hey, look who's here. Golden Robot Records is getting ready in the house. Looking forward to seeing the boss soon. So, yes, Mark Alexander Erber, who is the boss and the CEO of Golden Robot Records, will be here. And uh, we've, got, we've, we've got some good stuff to talk about. We've got some uh, uh, stuff. They've got a lot going on. We've got some other news. Maybe we'll be seeing some more uh, Golden Robot uh, on this channel and maybe we'll be able to give away some of their records i've got a lot of questions for uh mark as well so uh, anyway but so stay tuned and i want you guys to to ask these questions and here's one of them but save it for mark uh, what happened to the king's x album i'm hearing a lot about that and i'm hearing a lot about what happened to the john sykes record i want you guys to ask him we're gonna we're gonna talk to uh we're gonna we're gonna talk to him. He's here to answer your questions. So, anyway, uh, and remember that this Friday, uh, Johnny Monaco of Enough's Enough, he was in an LA Guns, a LA Guns. He was in a band called Tantric. I don't know what that is, but uh, but we have a pretty entertaining uh, conversation. Jamie Josta, if that's how you pronounce it. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I, 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 we worked on an event with him, and he was a very nice guy, and maybe he would be good. Oh, you know who else is coming up, folks? I'm sorry. Uh, John Bush.
from Armored Saint. And Anthrax is coming up. John Bush. How can I forget? I was beating around the bush. John Bush is coming up. And uh, there's somebody else. This is a... Uh, you would think that I just wake up and uh, come on here and uh, and start randomly talking. And the truth is that is uh, what I do. Uh, I got my Christmas videos on in the background so I can entertain myself, get into the holiday spirit. I got my misfit toys, uh, not to be confused with the misfits punk man. Um, anyway, so we, we let's get our questions. Uh, here's a good one. I'll talk about this. Hold on. Body knowledge. Rock and roll hall of fame is lame, but do you feel Billy Idol and or STP should be a good question? Rock and roll of fame is always something that uh, you can have to think about or have an opinion on. Billy Idol was, was pretty damn important. I mean, I know he's an 80s guy, but um, STP, no. No way, no how, forget it. Who cares? Nonsense. I don't think any of those bands, you know, there's only, uh, you know, Sex Pistols had one record. They should believe they should belong in the Hall of Fame. They changed things. STP sounds like everything else. I, and I don't dislike them, by the way. I just, that's not Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, I, I don't, a lot of these bands, they're putting them in. They're also putting them in too soon. We shouldn't be talking about Billy Idol and Stone Temple Pilots in the, in the same uh, conversation. One is long before the other. You know, maybe in 10 years when we run out of people, like the Baseball Hall of Fame putting Jim Cott in, you know, uh, they're, they're, you know they don't want to put in all the people who are on steroids, then, then maybe STP. And I'm not saying they're not a, uh, that they're a bad band, but Rock and Roll of Fame. And I mean, it looks, the Hall of Fame is getting ridiculous. It always has been. We, we all know that. So anyway, uh, I am happy that the Go-Go's went in. I'm a fan of the Go-Go's. And uh, yeah, Foo, Fader, Foo Fighters is a joke. You know, Foo Fighters before Iron Maiden. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. I, I, I know the Foo Fighters are God's gift to music for some reason, but I've never bought a Foo Fighters record. I don't listen to the, uh, you know, I, I, Dave Grohl, he's a nice guy. And I don't know when he became the ambassador of all things rock and roll. All of a sudden, uh, we, when we need a statement, we go to Dave Grohl. I do think it's cool that he he's he's loyal to like these bands and music, and he does cool stuff, and he, he definitely seems like he's having a good time, uh, and that's great. Foo Fighters and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, get out of here. You know, maybe in twenty years, but you know, doesn't uh, doesn't float my boat. And yes, of course, Iron Maiden, you know, one of the biggest heavy metal bands in history. You know, Judas Priest, these are bands that, uh, you know, we'll talk about them before we talk about uh, Foo Fighters. Uh, well, we, we, and we'll ask Mark Alexander Erber uh, what he thinks as well, because uh, he's running a record label and it's a, it's a difficult thing in a difficult time. And, uh, and I think that there is a need for someone like Golden Robot to sign up some of these, uh, these artists that maybe are slipping through the cracks. And, uh, and, and I'll talk about the artist. Uh, he's got a good variety of stuff uh, on, on the label, and we'll get into that with him. But, and he, he doesn't just have, you know, the, the metal, or as people call hair bands. I don't really like that term so much. But, uh, um, but he has all kinds of, you know, Filter and uh, Hot Chell Ray. You guys remember Hot Chell Ray? They, they were a pop band, but they were catchy. Well, I can't get the Hot Chell Ray out of my head. I uh, actually, last night when I was at lunch, I had the hot shell ray. Uh, it was fantastic. But uh, anyway, just so you guys are familiar with some of the bands on Golden Robot Records, Riley's LA Guns, Vanilla Fudge, Gilby Clark, Jefferson Starship, LA Guns. Uh, my favorite, the Johnny Thunders. I got to ask him how that happens. How is Johnny Thunders on a record label when he's been dead for 30 years? Uh, Phil X and the Drills. Rose Tattoo, there's some cool stuff here. You know, uh, Little Caesar, and uh, I'm looking at just some of the stuff, and I think, you know who, Dizzy Reed, and the Dizzy Reed record's great, but Rock and Roll Ain't Easy, it's a great record. Of all the Guns N' Roses bands who made solo records, it's probably the best one, I mean that. Listen to it, it's good. And uh, um, yeah, a lot of good stuff. Uh, I feel like Sin City Rejects would be good on this label. That's just me though, maybe I'm crazy. What do you think of 6 a.m.? What do you think I think of 6 a.m.? Oh, I saw, saw that. I clicked on the wrong one. Uh, so I'm friends with DJ Ashba. I see him around. He's a nice guy. I'm glad to see when he works. 
Um, I saw 6 a.m. play here in town for a friend. And uh, I forgot who else was there. Uh, 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 this uh, stupid pop thing. I liked it, too. It was good. Can't remember the name of the band. So give me a second. I'll, I'll not the Savage Garden, but uh, uh, Silver Shine Down. Shine Down. I saw I, it. So the bill was six a.m. Shine Down, who were very good, and then this thing called Five Finger uh, uh, Death Punch. I left. Terrible band. Uh, anyway, uh, and thank you, uh, Indy. Indy. Colt 777. I heard a good story about Chris DeGarmo today, and I can't really re tell anything about it. Doesn't that suck? I try to share everything with you, my YouTube friends. And uh, I heard a little insight on Chris DeGarmo, but can't say it yet. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. Now, the, you're, you're, you're saying here the guitar player from Wildside. The guitar player from Wildside, who was also in Vince Neil's band, is currently Sebastian Box. Uh, guitar player and his name is Brent Woods and yeah he would come on he's, he's, Brent Woods is a nice enough guy and actually he had a pretty serious cancer battle I think leukemia and uh, and he beat it so uh, that is always good noise uh, good news yeah Maiden before Smashing Pumpkins of course of course and listen just because I don't like a band doesn't mean they don't belong in the Hall of Fame and then we have the same discussions like uh you know, rap music and things like that. It's, I'm okay with it. Let, let, but I, and listen, this is an old discussion, but let's call it the Music Hall of Fame, right? Why are we calling it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Um, Kanye West doesn't play rock and roll. You know what I mean? I'm giving you the most outdated person I can think of to show you how hip I am. All right, get those questions ready for uh, uh, Mark Alexander Herber. Because we got a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about music. That's what we're here for. We're here to talk about music. Yeah, Queensryche. Queensryche is a fascinating band. They got a lot of problems. Queensryche is a band that I probably wouldn't see uh, these days. Not with this lineup. Um, and I'll tell you something that's dangerous because I'm going to go out on the road with Stephen Piercy and I'm going to run into a lot of these bands. And I, I don't want to, uh, you know, the last thing I want to do is hear people's opinions. I don't mean fans. I mean people in the bands that I say bad things about. Um, every time I go to use my laptop, it, it shakes. I can always click. You see this? I apologize. I try to fix that. I try to take uh, pride in this show. Where is Kip Winger? I'm assuming he's in Nashville. That's where he lived. Uh, all I want for Christmas is a Jimmy Crespo interview. First of all, thank you for the tip. And also, uh, me too. I text with Jimmy. We haven't. He hasn't responded to the last couple. He comes and goes in my life. Uh, he's a great guy. I managed him. He has amazing stories. Uh, I don't think he'd ever do one of these. Maybe he would do a call. But he's as reclusive as they come. So I'll text him again after this and tell him that you want it. But... Uh, I have not seen Jeff Tate's band, but I would think it's better than Queen's Rock because Jeff Tate uh, is Queen's Rock. Um, yeah. So I was going to go see, uh, uh, I'm, I'm joking. I was going to say I was going to go see Jeff Tate, but the show he played turned out to be a super spreader event here in Las Vegas. Uh, a lot of people uh, got sick after, not from the music, but from the pandemic. Uh, and uh, restrictions, I guess, are not very good in this town at certain venues. But I was not going to go. Uh, all right. Anyway, we're, we're coming up on the half of the hour. I was wanted to get, Oh, actually, you know what? We're coming up. Yeah, it's almost 6 o'clock. We're coming up on the hour. I can be a DJ now and give you the time and temperature. Uh, 6 p.m., 58 degrees here in Las Vegas. You're watching Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green. Uh, Anyway, uh, let's get to Mark Alexander. I thought, tell Mark, come on at six. I'll just be yapping for hours. Meanwhile, uh, I, you know, I'm already out of things to say. I want to talk to him about the music industry. He's the one who knows. I just sit here in my living room and I'll bullshit a little bit. But uh, anyway, let's, let's before he gets here, let's remember. Friday, Johnny Monaco, 
really good interview. If you're not familiar with Johnny Monaco, check out his music. Uh, you, you will dig it. If you like Cheap Trick and you like the Beatles, and I know it's an odd comparison, but uh, you'll like it. And then also uh, G. Tom Mack, John Bush coming up, a lot of good stuff. And if you, if you want to ask questions of John Bush, by the way, go sign up for my Patreon. People who sign up for my Patreon will be able to ask questions of those upcoming guests. So if you want to do that, get on there. Um, is Under the Blade the best Twisted Sister record? That's a good question. Um, I mean, maybe. I go back and forth. Uh, for me, there's not really a bad Twisted record until uh, uh, you know, the last two were a little, uh, a little off. But, uh, yeah. We're going to ask Mark Alexander Erber what he thinks. And waiting for the new King's X. Well, I bet you Mark can answer that question. It's good. It's good that you guys are here because he's probably sick of answering these questions. But we're going to find out. You know, he has uh, he's, he has like four hundred artists, by the way. Four hundred. You know, Golden Robot is the main label, but he has little subsidiary uh, labels as well. And so, uh, yeah, and so, I'm anxious to ask him about some of these. Uh, these are, I'm looking at the records right now. And uh, I, I and I think Golden Robot does, does a great thing. Uh, here's a good question: um, Do you think Michael Graves did a good job in the Misfits? So, I do. Um, he, he was not. Uh, I like those records. I like the Michael Graves records. I think they're underrated. Um, obviously, he wasn't Glenn Danzig, and, and and at the time, I hated it. I thought it's the dumbest idea possible. But I really do enjoy the records that Michael Graves made with the Misfits. It's a different thing, but I I, I like it. We played a show opening for Michael Graves and it was fun. I think he, uh, I think he's a little out there though with his views and shooting his mouth off. You know, I try not to, I try not to do that. <laughs> yeah. See, he's, he, uh, he says he likes it as much as the Danzig records and they are good records. There is some hidden, there's some hidden gems in there. If you haven't heard them, Checking out. They got that one project, 1950 or whatever it's called, where it's all covers of 50 songs. I love that. We were thinking about doing something like that uh, for Sin City Rejects, my band. All right. Well, we've got a few thousand people watching right now. And I know you're all on the edge of your seat waiting to talk uh, to Mark Alexander. Over. I got Burl Lives playing in the background, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Uh, a legendary Christmas song written by a Jew, as you may or may not know. Uh, most Christmas songs are written by Jewish uh, per uh, performers. Yeah, uh, guy's name was Johnny Marks. Johnny Marks never celebrated Christmas in his life, which is kind of sad. Um, but he did write some of the best, uh, some of the best. Anything, anything about Christmas and rock, for the most part, Johnny Marks wrote it. Go. Oh, hold on. Listen, I would love to stay in. Uh, answer all your questions and tell you more about the famous Jewish guys who wrote Christmas songs. But Mark Alexander Erber is here, so let's welcome him to the show. Hey, Mark. Uh oh. Can you hear me, Mark? Yeah, he's probably got us on mute. This is the what happens when you do live television. Mark, can you hear me? Hmm. Well, we'll give him a second to figure that out. We're going to give Mark a second. Okay. You there, Mark? How about now? I'm going to take him out while he works on that. I'm, I think he's probably just on mute, but uh, we'll get him. We'll get him back in just a second. And if you guys didn't know, Mark Alexander Erber is the president and CEO of Golden Robot Records. They've got some amazing bands. We're going to talk about what it is like to be running a record label at this uh, time because things are so drastically different. Let's see if uh, let's see if Mark can hear us now. Mark, can you hear me? Hmm. By the way, Mark is joining us all the way from Australia, so that could be one of the reasons. Uh, I don't know why I'm blaming Australia. Uh, let's see. He's saying he can't hear me, I believe, as, as you guys are noticing, which is odd. 
Mark, you there? Hmm. All right, we're going to come back then. We're going to come back. Live television. Uh, someone's saying here, uh, they're talking about Jewish people celebrating Christmas. No, I'm talking about um, famous uh, songwriters of Christmas songs who happen to be Jewish who didn't celebrate Christmas. Um, Johnny Marks being one of the biggest ones of all time. He wrote some of the biggest Christmas songs and he happened to not have, uh, didn't, celebrate, didn't celebrate Christmas. Okay, so well, hopefully uh, Mark's going to log back in and we'll get to this discussion. So, um, let's see, I'm skipping around here. I'm glad that so many people are joining us and we're going to get to this. So bad brains are the misfits. That's a good one. I've talked about having uh, uh, bad brains on the show. I go with the misfits. It was a bigger influence to me, uh, but definitely love uh, bad brains. Yeah, Joey Ramone. Yeah, Joey Ramone was Jewish. He celebrated Christmas. Why not? Why not? Um, all right, we're just waiting for Mark to come back. Yeah, G. Tom Mack, that's who I interviewed yesterday. And I think you guys are going to like that one. Cry Little Sister from the Lost Boy soundtrack. He's got new music. He's got two musicals in the works. And uh, and he's had a career that's 50 years. It's pretty, pretty crazy. And I believe he celebrates Christmas because he sent me a Christmas tree emoji. So I think he does. Mm -hmm. All right, we're just waiting for Mark to come back. I should probably check my my secret uh, message line and see if he was having any problems. Yep. Oh, okay, let's try it again. All right, here we go. Let's welcome Mark. Mark, can you hear me? Uh-oh. He still can't hear us. This is why I should record these things. Pretend it's live. I feel bad leaving Mark there looking puzzled. Mark, can you actually hear me? No. Hmm. All right. Mark? I feel like his speaker is down. Let's try to, uh, hold on. I'm going to take him out for a second. And I'm going to message him. I've never actually had to do this, so. Okay, here we go. Let me see. Okay, so he's he he's acknowledged that he can't hear me. This is what I get for live, uh, live uh, television, uh, YouTube, as they call it, as the kids call it. Well, I'm sure we're going to figure this out. Just give it a, give it a second, and uh, hold on. It's exciting, guys. I know. Mark, hmm. we could, I mean, do you think we should do the, the interview with signs? You hold up signs. Uh, <laughs> how strange. So he 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 can't hear me. We can see. I can't hear him, so we can't hear each other. Hmm. Frustrating. Uh, no, Mark. All right, I, don't, I might have to use a phone. Hold on, guys. Is 
is what I get for doing live uh, live broadcasts. All right, I'm gonna uh, yeah sign language. Hmm. Well, we're going to figure it out. It's going to take a second, but we're going to figure it out. There's uh Hold on. What an exciting uh, uh, broadcast. Let me check the... Uh, Well, usually I'm a, a expert at these situations, but I really have no clue what to do. Uh, Mark, no, 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 nothing, huh? I'm giving him the universal gesture of I don't know what's going on. I, he's got a handsome photo of Steve Riley's LA guns behind him, and uh, now he's shaking his head. Yeah, that's crazy. So he, we, let me see. All right, looks like he's writing notes. Hold on. I'm going to change browsers. All right. He'll be back. He's going to change browsers. I think that's what that said. I was about to just give him my, my, my phone number and then you guys could could uh, call me as well. But let's see what I got down here. He'll be back. All right, let me get to some of your questions. This is, you don't want to sit around all day. What, what do you guys got going on? Hold on. Okay, so here is the admin from Golden Robot and, and uh, he or she or they or them, as the case may be, says that they can't hear at all. So, okay. Never had that happen. Had a lot of problems. Usually, uh, if they can't see, um, if they can't see, uh, they can't hear. <laughs> if a man can't see, he can't fight. Does anyone know what movie that's from? Somebody, please, if you know what line that is, a man can't see, a man can't fight. Let's see if you guys know what that movie is. I'll wait. Just put it in the comments. First person to get it right will win a prize. <laughs> it's not the movie Fat Guy Goes Nutsoid, but that was a trauma movie, and, and uh, of course I remember it. I worked with trauma. All right, hold on. I'm going to send a message. Anyone remember it? There it is. Tony, very good. Karate Kid. It's actually Karate Kid 3. Thomas Ian Nichols says it. And I should point out, by the way, come into the show very soon. Thank you, Brian, for being exact. Uh, from the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai, Ron Thomas will be on the show. See, I just remember stuff randomly. Uh, I've worked with a few of those guys, and he's going to be here, and he's going to talk about uh, Cobra Kai and Karate Kid. He plays Bobby Brown. Uh, uh, on the show. Not the guy from New Edition. Um, hold on, guys. Just checking my Tinder. Just checking the old Tinder. All right, let's see if this works. Here he is. I'm going to try one more time. Mark? I reckon I this way. Hey, look at that. Well, I couldn't um, eat. I couldn't eat because I was on Firefox, which I don't normally use. And, and but I could hear you because I had you on YouTube on something else. Mm -hmm. but anyway, we're here, my friend. We're here. That's all that matters. The thousands and thousands of people watching are here. They're, they've and they've had time now to think of their questions for you. Um, so, but I've got questions first, Mark, that I want to make sure that we get to. And so, first of all, uh, thank you for doing this. I enjoy what Golden Robot Record, Robots Records does. We've had some of your artists on the show before. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so great that you're putting out music from, from these artists. And I think that, I said it earlier, people are getting lost in this shuffle um, of, of where to put out new music. And I know there's been labels that have come and gone. And, uh, and so it's great that you've made this grow. And I was explaining to my audience that 
you've made it grow so much that what was just Golden Robot's record, now with your subsidiaries, there's over 400 uh, uh, bands on your labels, which is which is just so incredible in this day and age. Look, it, it is. I'm First and foremost, I'm three things. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a music fan, and I, 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 I love music. I just, everything to me starts and ends with Led Zeppelin. So, you know, I've got the boys above me here, fully signed. What is that? Fully signed, um, the song remains the same, including Bonham. So I've always been a mad Led Zeppelin and music fan. And to be in this position now, the position that we've obviously created, I, I, I'm very humbled by it. I feel very uh, honoured to be in this position and to work with the people that we work with. Um, you know, can we swear on this show, Jason? Sure. Yeah. I've worked with some idiots um, and I've worked with some good people. <laughs> I know that's not a swear word. But still. You're, 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 I mean, I, I thought you were going to, you know, you weren't going to be that risque. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's a little, now it might be going over the top. I thought, you know, I've worked with some cocksuckers and some pricks yeah. and some motherfuckers, but idiots, that's a little, you're pushing it. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, I'm you obviously up. never worked with Bobby Blotzer. No, clearly. Um, I, I Look, I'm very happy with where we are. You're right, there's 12 record labels, there's 400 bands. Um, you know, we've got here in about six years. I believe we're kicking some, you know, major ass and, the US and Europe, etc. Crusader Records, our metal label, is doing great, and so is Golden Robot, the main label. And and it's 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 cool, man. I just think we approach things differently, and you know we'll get into it. But I approach things very differently. We market very differently. We've got twelve PR and marketing teams around the world pushing the product. Um, you know, I've got a sports and entertainment division where we sponsor UFC fighters that are wearing Golden Robot, and we're putting music over their um, their. Um, fight videos and we're putting, you know, they, they can walk into the octagon playing our music. So not many people, if anyone, is doing that in, in this in this land. And all that really means is it's good for the artists. It's great for the bands. They've got more ways to get into the market. Yeah. So, all right, Mark, yeah. Let's, let's rewind a little bit because, uh, and again, you're based in Australia and I want to make sure, I, I, you know, I'm using my butcher New York pronunciation of things, but I want to make sure that people understand how you got involved in this? Because as you said, you're an entrepreneur. It wasn't always music, though. So I want you to tell me a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into the label. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I live half the year in Australia and half the year in Los Angeles. Um, during COVID, I was – before COVID, I was there a lot, but um, building the company. But obviously, I chose Sydney um, to be – I chose Australia to be in during the, the lockdown, which was actually the right move. It was definitely yeah. the right move, except when the vaccine was rolled out, Australia fucked it up. So um, we're caught up now, but it was a disaster there for a while. But, yeah, look, long story short, again, I've always been into music. I've always loved my music. My son, at a very early age, started playing um, drums, and it was very, very clear to the um, the untrained eye that he would, there was something special about the way he played drums. So at about eight or nine years old, he ended up on Australia's Got Talent, which is like America's Got Talent or Britain's Got Talent. And he nearly won that show. And when it was when it was finished, um, I thought, well, what do I do with this kid? You know, he's a fantastic drummer. He's only young. Uh, let, let I don't want him to be a novelty. Let's make sure he has some sort of a legacy. I didn't want him to be just another one of those kids that's famous for two seconds and then it's all over and then they end up with a horrendous drug addiction for the next 15, 20 years, and it's just a shit cycle. So I put him together with a couple of um, really great musicians in Australia, and they were just going into um, um, into the studio to see what they'd end up, end up coming out with. And they came out with an album. And funny enough, I was looking at it yesterday. They came out with this album, Moon, the Orbiter. So Jagger, my son, was 10 and played played all the drums on the album and when i shot the, them around nobody gave a fuck nobody was interested in 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 the slightest that was in about 2000 and um about two, 2014 2015 something like that anyway long story short i said fuck it i'll do it myself so i um put the album out and you can see it's golden robot one that was the first album we ever did. And when we, when the boys came out of the studio, I was sitting there with them and um, I wanted to know, um, I wanted to give them something. I'm quite a generous person. So I thought, well, you know, 
what, what would he give them? So we, I ended up just getting them all a little golden robot. So when it came time to name the company, he was sitting on the he was sitting on the speaker, and um, I uh, called the company Golden Robot Records. So that's that's primarily how it started. And then we started signing bands in Australia. We started signing uh, you know Rose Tattoo and Super Jesus and Choir Boys and My Sex and all these bands that sort of made it a few years earlier, but they were sort of drifting out there. And then I got the taste of it, and as with my personality, I'm a creator and I like to build things. So I thought, well, fuck it, let's go hard. So I linked myself with um, uh, a very prominent uh, record executive uh, who had been involved and discovered everyone from Bon Jovi to Nickelback to um, Pantera, etc. Funny enough, I was um, introduced to him by my friend Tracy Guns, and um, uh, and he uh, int- Tracy introduced me, and then. A few of us uh, just went hard for about two or three years and um, very hard and signed everybody. Um, and it was great. It went really, really well. You know, we were made the typical mistakes in the beginning. We were undercapitalized. I signed deals I shouldn't have signed. I was ripped off. I paid people money and they never produced the album. Um, and it was awesome. It was difficult. It was an interesting ride, but it gave us the foundations and the base to be where we are today, which is the 400 bands and 12 record labels. So that that's the, the short version. Yeah. And yes, and, uh, talk about King's X and John Sykes because, you know, people want to know what happened. Hey, I want to know what happened. So, so. so yeah, before. well, we'll get to that because those are the big questions. And I, ever since I said you were coming on, I have been uh, uh, messaged constantly about those two things. But so here's what I, I'm thinking. I like the way that you've branded the company because I've heard the name and I kept seeing it. And I'll be honest with you, when bands um, that, you know, we call them 80s bands, let's say, when they make records, a lot of times I see the label and I think, "Uh uh-oh, you know, this is not going to get any attention or this label is going to come and go. And then for a minute, there'll be something, you know, uh, going way back, you know, CMC Records is going to be the thing. Now, that was a major division, but... And then as time goes on, there'll be something else and there'll be your frontiers, you know, uh, and things like that. But a lot of times these bands get lost in the shuffle. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there could be too many bands of the same genre that can get lost in the shuffle. And, and you'll, you'll talk about that. But um, what I keep, so, so I like the branding. I like that I hear the name Golden Robot Records. I like that you haven't given up, that you keep putting out product and you keep signing artists. And as I was saying before you came on, different artists, Filter, mm-hmm. Hot Shell Ray, Um, things like that. So here's my questions. As as a musician and as a musician who has a record that I feel like needs to get out to more people, these are the things I want to know. Why do we need a record label in this day and age? What does a record label do in in this day and age? And then how does the artist make money and how does the label make money? I know I'm hitting you with a lot of questions at once, but I bet you there's a lot of people who want to know too. Yeah, look, it's interesting. I, I, funnily enough, I just got off a, a big interview in the UK, and so it, it doesn't matter where you are, UK, America, Europe, Australia, the questions are pretty much the same. So so let's break it down. Do you need a record label? No, you don't. You Anyone in the world can go and put a, put a song on Spotify, iTunes. The difference is if you want more than your family and friends to buy the album or buy the single or buy the EP, then, yes, you need a label or at least a marketing PR team that will promote your product. I find with dealing with certain PR and marketing people, they'll tell you everything they want they you want to hear. Funnily enough, they'll always want their money up front and then they'll go and do the job for you. So when someone wants to, if they're in the PR and marketing game and they want their money up front, that's normally a bit of a red flag. Of, well, what's going to go on here? Not all the time, of course, but I've had different experiences. So, when you get a proper record label, and let's face it, you guys that are musicians are creative. I wish I could write a tune on a piano or a or a keyboard or, or, a, or a guitar. I watch my son play drums on, you know, I'm in awe. It's unbelievable. But you're not necessarily good at the business side of things, the marketing, the promotion, the uploading, the metadata, the ISRC codes, uh, the brainstorming. Um, should we do this single? Should we do that single? Et cetera, et cetera. There's a plethora of questions. There's so many questions. There's so many different answers, et cetera, et cetera. 
So what we do as a label, traditionally what we do and what is working is I will sit down with the artist. We've got about 85 people working for us across the world now and we will sit down, a certain number of people will sit down at any one time and brainstorm with that artist and actually work out what does the artist want, not what does the record label want, but what does the artist need and want. I've had many bands. I've talked to a band, band in LA last night that I'm hoping to sign that's got three albums out and nobody's fucking listening. And he's got like 27 monthly viewers, uh, listeners. Well, there's, there's, unless you're just doing it for therapy or for a cathartic reason, that's fine. Or a therapeutic reason to put it out, that's fine. But nobody's listening. So if you want to do it properly and you want people to listen and you want to make a career out of it and make a couple of dollars, um, then you need a team around you to do that. So you can just concentrate on writing and recording and playing live and let us do everything else. So I've had many bands come to me with two or three albums or one album, et cetera, out, like the Dangerines in Montreal. Awesome band, awesome band. Could be the next Struts or Strokes. And I said, boys, you've got, you got a fantastic album, but you've wasted this album. you spent X number of dollars in the studio. You've put your hard blood, sweat and tears into it. You've put this album out, but nobody's heard it. Let's pull it down and let's go a single at a time. Like Riley's LA Guns. They hadn't even played a show since the M3 Festival hadn't even played a show and we did four singles we built it up we did videos we built it everything up and yes the court case didn't hurt that everyone was talking about it but ultimately if the music was shit no one would have bought it mate i can tell you with the amount of vinyls and cds and digital downloads they sold it was the best album they've had since the first album so ultimately there's got to be a rhyme and a reason on how and why you do things and that's one thing I love about Golden Robot is we spend that time with the bands and I or the team might come up with 20 ideas and you might think 19 of them are shit, but that one idea that we come up with to do something a bit differently clicks and it works for the band. Yeah, I I, I see that. I, you know, I travel with musicians. I used to call myself a business person first and musician second. I, I felt like being a musician was a dirty word. And also that... Uh, people in this industry don't necessarily know. And as you were saying, it's changing every day. Explaining an algorithm to a musician who is, yeah. you know, 55 plus is not always an easy thing. Sometimes it's not easy to explain to one who's 25 plus. Well, so people are, scared. people are scared of Spotify. And and I, you know, I have bands that, well, I had bands, not so much anymore. In the early days, um, I could controversially tell you a few names of people that have no idea that are stuck in the 80s. But at, at the end of the day, Spotify is three things. It's the biggest radio station in the world. That's the way you got to look at it. And if you don't think you can buy a house from your streams of Spotify, you're fucking kidding yourself. We've got bands on the label that have, that have bought a house from streaming on Spotify. Yes, you've got to get in the high hundreds of millions and the billions, but it's still possible. And it's your calling card. It doesn't matter if you're a local band in Los Angeles or a band out of Israel. At the end of the day where we have bands everywhere, at the end of the day, if you're going to a booker, an agent, a manager, or anybody, they're looking at Spotify and they're looking at your numbers and they're looking at your bio, they're looking at your photos, they're looking at your streams, your monthly listeners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's like a big calling card that bands in the 70s, 80s, and 90s didn't have. So you've actually got an advantage if you use it properly to get to the world. I agree with you. Many don't. You know, most artists. Um share the same meme about Spotify. They cry that they're getting ripped off. And, and maybe in some cases they, they have some argument. So how uh, we know that Spotify streams don't pay the most. And of course you do have to you know get out there and maybe it's growing. I do believe it's the easiest um, time to ever get music. I can interview someone and while I'm interviewing them, the product is being listened to and sold. 100%. 100%. Um, right away. So how do people use Spotify to their advantage? What are the artists doing wrong? Instead of being scared of it, what can they do so that they can actually make some money? Well, look, it, it's interesting. Now, you've got to remember, through with the DSPs, the digital service providers, there's many of them. Uh, you know, there's Spotify and iTunes are the top ones, but there's, there's many, many others. You know, YouTube's obviously doing music and Amazon, et cetera, et cetera, Tidal, et cetera. So a lot of them are working well. The way to really get Spotify up and running, that is to make sure, you, as I said before, your bio and your photos and everything is constant, making sure that, look, what we've had a really good, what we have a good success rate is, is getting our artists on 
uh, the playlisting. Because if you can get on a a Spotify curated playlist that has anything from 50,000 to 250,000 to 2.7 million additional listeners, they're going to play your music and that's going to throw your streams up. And I agree with you, they don't pay enough and they should pay more. And I think, I hope eventually they will pay more, but it is what it is at the moment. There's nothing you can do about it. If you're going to say, well, I don't want it on there because I, I don't want to get paid by them. Well, I think you're shooting yourself in the foot. So I think ultimately you've got to put yourself in a position that you are marketing yourself as much as possible. And it all comes hand in hand, Jason. I was emailing a, a band this morning and I said, look, you've got 15,500 people on Instagram. And yes, you know, you've got the filters with a couple of million hot shell rays, the same LA guns is 400,000 on Facebook. So there's varying degrees of bands. And I said to the this band, you've got 15,500 people on on Instagram, which is not a bad number. That's a, that's a nice start. Thanks very much. But they've only posted three times in November. Wow. And those posts were, you know, um, single out now. We do the post. We actually design all that artwork and do all those tiles for our bands and we send it to them. So you'll see out now. And it's professional. It's got their logos. It's got it's clear. We put a blurb down the bottom. Now, that only had three out for November. And I just don't think that's enough interaction with your audience. You've got to be able to interact, and not only with those tiles. Okay, that's fine. It's out now. Thanks for letting me know. But why don't I always use the, the the catchphrase "scars, guitars, and cars" or "cars, guitars, and scars"? That's what your fans want to see. They want to see potentially. You know, what what are you doing today? I'm in the studio. I'm playing. What do you have for breakfast? Oh, look, I just got this new '71 Camaro. Uh, whatever it is, it's just interacting with the fans. And letting them know that you're human when we, you know, I cut you, you bleed. They want to know. They want to. They want to be. Um, they want access to your life, and that yes. engages everybody. And it needs to be. And it needs to be more human. And I'm really on that bandwagon at the moment with. And I won't. I won't digress. But you know, again, one of the things I try to keep going all the time in the last few years, I couldn't. If I saw you in the street, I wouldn't even be able to hug you or shake your hand or, you know, what is it, fist pumping or that ridiculous elbow handshake. You they, know, call that the, they call that the porn star handshake. On the, It started yeah. because on the sets of porno movies, uh, you couldn't, uh, you know, you didn't want to touch each other's hands, so you yeah. gave me the elbow, yeah. That would have made it tough for the fluffer. Look oh, at that. There you go. The Talk fluffer. Technical you... difficulties. Uh-oh. Oh, hold on. It's all right. See that? I, I got so into the porn star handshake. <laughs> I'm saying. not sure what part of your body knocked the camera over. Yeah, well, yeah, ne neither am I. All right, look at that. We're back. So, um, so I think, you know, I think ultimately, you know, bringing back that human touch, and even if you physically can't do it, you've got to be able to reach your fans in a much more human way. And I tell you what, Jason, that's why rock and roll is really working at the moment because people are sick to death of the, 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 the lines in hip hop and the lines in pop and all the bubblegum stuff which does well. I've got no problem with it. We release music like that all the time. The The interesting part and the best part is rock and roll is in your veins, man. It's in your blood. It's where it all started. It's what means something. It makes you feel the best. And that's why rock and roll is really working at the moment. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The personal touch is what people don't always understand with social media. You can't just go on your social media and say, come to my gig, buy my record. That That's goes without saying, you have to have a connection. And I, and I think that a lot of people do need someone to do it. Golden Robot's much more of a, uh, than just a record label. And I think as time comes by, goes on, maybe the, the managing and marketing of the artists comes in as well, because I know how hands-on you are. I know uh, a lot of people who are on the label. And if, you know, like I said, I've had on the show, Kelly Nichols is gonna be on next week. We'll talk okay. about the new, yeah, we'll talk about the new uh, Riley's LA Gun record that they're working on now. Yeah. And so um, you, you're, you're involved. And I think that these artists do need that. Um, and it is. And so for you as a as a record label president, how is it is how do you make money? How does how is anyone making any money, Mark? Well, look, at the end of the day, it's very simple. You know, you, you've got to, you, it, it's a stage of things to get to the money machine. Um, you talk about someone like Kelly. Kelly called me a couple of months ago on a Sunday at about, I don't know, 11 in the morning. And I answered and he said, I can't put, it was actually longer than that, but it was longer ago. But he said, 
on all the major labels I've ever been on, I've never been able to get hold of the guy that owns it on a Sunday. I said, well, we're 24-7, man. That's what it's about. And then that links into that relationship you have with the bands. It links into the trust you have with the bands and it links in and doing different things with the bands. You sit there and look at that unbelievable fucking documentary on the Beatles that's been out the last few weeks that Peter Jackson should be fucking knighted for how well he did that documentary. And you look at that and you, you, you strip it all away and all the questions were, what the fuck was Yoko Ono sitting in the studio and what was this and what was that? Fuck, they smoke a lot and, God, they got incredible hair. And, you know, like like you can strip all that stuff away and the infighting and they ate a lot of toast and you take it all away and they were just a rock and roll band. They're just a rock and roll band. And sometimes in life, you've just got to strip all this other stuff away, make sure the band trusts you, and you've got to go out there and do different things and market different things to make sure that that then resonates with the audience and then they sell albums. And that's the way you make money. It's as simple as that. I can say to you, um, you know, I dropped last week that incredible, we'll talk about it, but I do a lot of creatives. We did Rock the Vax in Australia. You go and get vaccinated, I'll give you a free album. All right, let's get vaccinated. Let's get this live music scene back together. So whatever I can do, I'll do. I just dropped an album called Rock for Myanmar, which is not a political statement, but it's bringing awareness to the dis disgrace what's going on over at Mi in, in, in Myanmar at the moment. So when you look at that and you think, oh, that's, there's 60, people in Myan 60 million people in Myanmar, that's going to go incredibly well. Well, unless I do marketing and I do PR and I get the message and the narrative out correctly, it's not going to sell. So it comes from trust with the band and the narrative out to the public to make sure they're getting what we're saying. And it's not an easy job. It's a hard job. And you know what? I've got bands in, in, in I've got bands that have got that dreaded minus 1,000 streams, that all four minus 1,000. Then I've got bands that have got a billion streams. And then you've got bands, obviously, in the middle. But at the end of the day, it's all the same. It's all approached the same. It's just different budgets that are aligned. But you've got to engage the public all the way along because they're the ones that are going to spend the money and buy it. So do you make money? Look, you do. Is it like the old days? I don't know. I wasn't around in the old days. But I know that you can sell CDs, you can sell albums, you can sell streams, you can sell concerts, you can sell merch, you can do things that are different now. But the key to it, the key to Golden Robot is getting it out in front of more people. And that's what I find we do well. Even if you hadn't heard of one of our bands, you might have heard of Golden Robot. And, of course, there's people that haven't heard of us, and that's obviously. But that's why I've done things like the sports and entertainment division. Because if I've got a UFC fighter with a Golden Robot T-shirt on and someone looks at it and they can hear the new Riley's LA gun single as they walk out into the octagon, that's fucking 20, 30 million people that might might not have heard of Riley's LA Guns, might not have heard of um, Golden Robot, but you know what? They've fucking just heard the song and they're going to go and buy it. So you've got, that's the way to do this. And then one day Universal will come along and pay $100 million and I'll fuck off. <laughs> if, they, uh, if one of those fighters loses the fight, they're going to hate Steve Riley more than Tracy Guns. You know what I mean? Nah, you know what? This is the thing. And this is the interesting thing about... Um, us sponsoring UFC fighters, and it's a really good conversation. But in essence, I say to them, look, I mean, we I, I don't go to someone like Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor, although we deal with his management, Conor McGregor is up here. If I want a Conor McGregor to wear a Golden Robot T-shirt, he'd have to own the company. He's mm. not interested in a couple of bucks a month. He wants to own the company. That's the level he's at. But if you cleverly pick like a Hannah Goldie or a Casey O'Neill um, or a Solomon Renfro, um, or a, or a, um, on Andrea KGB Lee, who are going to be the next stars, and they're all on the roster, by the way. Um, they're going to be the next stars, and you align yourself with them. Well, not only is their product and their fan base growing, so is the artist, and so is Golden Robot that's linked with them. So I find it a really brilliant way now to mass market because I wanted to find something extra, and that was the fastest growing sport in the world is UFC, and we've linked. And this is just the beginning. You wait to see what we're doing next year with them. Yeah, and, and we talked a little bit, you know, off the record as well, and there's some great things ahead um, mm. down the road for Golden Roll. But how important is vinyl? Hugely important. I think vinyl's fantastic. Look, I'm a, as you know, I'm a massive vinyl guy. I love my vinyl. I, I spend periods in my time, um, you know, uh, buying vinyl, first pressings. I've got an incredible zeppelin collection of first pressings you know from all over the world so i love it um 
I think it's a, it's a great piece of merchandise. It's also almost gone back to the 50s where you bought that as a piece of merchandise when you're out on the road. But the things we can do with vinyl now, I mean, with Riley's LA Guns, I did eight different versions of vinyl, which were, you know, red, white and blue, three different, you know, red, white, blue. Um, actually, I did clear. I didn't do white because white's actually shit sounding. But red, white and blue. We did purple for Australia. We did, I think, yellow for Europe or something like that. And they all sold. And we did, we were doing fan packs at, can't remember what they were, like three, three, four hundred dollars each, which had everything that's different. Super fans love vinyl, and I love doing vinyl. Unfortunately, vinyl's gone up 40%, and there's about eight to 12 month waiting now. If I ordered now, like Gilby Clark, for example, that album did super well, and we've got vinyl coming out next year, but there's a delay on the vinyl because of the production. They just can't get the raw material. So that's the only issue with vinyl, but I think vinyl is vitally important. If you can afford to do it, you should always do vinyl. Even if it's limited numbers, it becomes a collector's item. Yeah, I uh, I definitely see that. Earlier in the show, I opened up uh, Tuff's 30th anniversary. The guy, Stevie Rochelle of Tuff, he, he owns Metal Sludge, the website also. And he went and made a licensing deal with, uh, I think it was Electra or whoever he was on. And... He, maybe it wasn't, but he, anyway, they made this nice new gatefold vinyl and people are excited. And I see that with all the artists and I saw that with LA Guns as well. The collectible, you know, I read an article, I was in a studio and I picked up a magazine and it said it used to be you buy the record to get the little merch item that comes with it. Now you buy the merch item and then the record comes with it. It's a different. But you've got to remember, I've got a, I've got a decent player here in, in Sydney, and you know, I've got the four speakers surrounding, and you've got a nice deck and a couple of amps, etc. And you know, sometimes you sit there and you put your like, say, um, Led Zeppelin, um, Led Zeppelin Four, for example, right? Or Houses of the Holy, whatever. Um, physical graffiti is actually a really good example. So you open it up. You know, you're sliding the things out. I'm talking about original pressing. You're sliding the things out. You're looking at the album. You're looking at what they've written, all the weird shit that they used to write, etc. And you're putting it on. You hear the crackle. And then you hear the stereo come out through the stereo speaker. I mean, that's the way the bands wanted you to uh, hear their music anyway. And, you know, I, I'm people that know me, I'm a bit of a car car collector and a car nut. So I've got, I've got like, Trans Am collection with... Uh, like I see, there's nothing better than a fucking 1977 Smoke the Band of Trans Am, and you've got a eight track in there with Zeppelin or Kiss or ACDC, and you put that in. It's the worst sound in the world, but it's the best sound in the world because it comes with so much nostalgia and so much old school. I fucking love that. So vinyl, I try to do as much vinyl as possible for as many bands as possible. I have had Sebastian Bach uh, give me lectures on vinyl. I've been to his house and I stood in the magic spot and listened. And he played me the first Robert Plant solo record, which I wasn't that familiar with. And I got to tell you, it was great. Awesome. And the, the sound was great. And yeah. uh, the people who are passionate are passionate. And then there's people like me. I have the most amazing autographed record collection. I've never played any of these records. But boy, they look nice when they're signed and they're collectible. Yeah. And so I think that that is a big part uh, um, of, of the marketing. And as you said, you know, you've got to stay on it. You can't just go, oh, I put this thing out. That's one of the other problems I feel. A band puts a record out, and then a month later, well, it came and it went. To me, there's no such thing as the new album. The new okay. the, the album is the new album until there's another album. You it's keep pushing. Album. Absolutely. I mean, we, we do that all the time. There's a couple of record labels that are famous for pumping music out, and they'll put it out, and then they'll forget about it, literally forget about it. We're always re-pushing. It's very, um, it's very um, common for us to push. See, you can't take it. So let's say um, we dropped four, which we'll is talk about again, Riley's LA Guns as an example. We dropped four singles and we dropped the album. We still dropped an, a song to radio. I think it was Lost Boys or something to radio. Um, three months after the album had actually come out, we didn't put it on Spotify because it's already on Spotify and Spotify aren't interested in you putting a single out that's already on the album. Then you just basically can't do it. However, you can drop it to radio and you can service it. And you can put PR behind it. So we do that a lot. We reservice things all the time. And I think you should. You should because there's always nuggets that are there that people haven't heard or people want that can drive people back to the album. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about some of the artists because we'll be talking about Rise of the Guns a little bit. And then I want to let the uh, audience ask their questions because yeah. they've been waiting um, as well. But so I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the records 
And so starting with LA Guns uh, Renegades, which obviously now it's called Riley's LA Guns. This is a band that I was involved with. I know these guys. I know the guys on both sides, as do yep. you. Uh, I, I found them, their singer, Kurt Frolic. I told them very clearly that this is not a Phil Lewis copy. If you're yeah. looking for a guy who is a Phil Lewis in person, this is the wrong guy. But if you're looking for a guy who can add to your band, new music, plays guitar, uh, and has a cool thing and has great songs, he's perfect. I, I was happy to see the response to Renegades. I think a lot of it was that you were behind it uh, as far as the push, because I noticed it. I noticed the different colors. I noticed the bundles. Yeah. And it didn't hurt that the other band shoots their mouth off. I think it's a mistake on their parts. But every time they talk about it, people check it out. There's enough room for everybody. So really? you can like LA Guns with Phil and Tracy, and you could like Riley's LA Guns, and you could also like one more better than the other. But when it comes to personality, you might get sick and tired of the crybabies complaining all the time. The fan doesn't care. We don't want to know. We, it's petty. If someone ripped off someone or someone did this or someone rolled up a newspaper and hit someone on the head, it's in my Riley interview. It doesn't matter. It's silly. And so the music is what stands out. And when you go to see Riley's LA Guns, it is not an LA Guns greatest hit set. They are trying to push this new music. And it's a new band. It's a band. It's a band. And yeah. I think it's refreshing. Of course you call it LA Guns. If Steve Riley has the rights to do it, you 100%. use it. And, and you introduce people. And there's two guys who were both in LA Guns and you cause attention to this new music. So it's doing great. We should say brand new Riley's LA Guns. The record is being recorded next week. Kelly Nichols is going to be on my show uh, yeah. to talk about it a little bit, but they are getting together. People don't realize they were lucky to even be able to make the Renegades album with the lockdown. So it was just before the lockdown. It was December 2019. They went in for a week. And they smashed it out. And, yeah, we were very lucky that that was done like three months before the lockdown. And that was yeah. guys bringing in some of their older products, you know, songs. Kurt had a band. Steve Riley had a band. Uh, Kelly. And, and they bring it together. Now you've got them together. And they're all together. And they got some time. And I think you're going to get a really good follow-up record. And people's personal dramas aside, I think you're going to get good music. And I think that should be what we all – Want. So, okay, so that's Renegades. We know about that. Gilby Clark, you've got a few records from Gilby. Talk a little bit about that. Let me just digress for one second to tell you something about Riley's LA Guns. Yeah. That, you know, there was a lot of stuff said. And the one thing I was super proud of, and I'll say it public, and I said it before and I'll say it again, that I was super proud of Steve and Kelly that they basically kept their mouth shut. And there was a lot of people from the other camp that went hard at Steve. And a lot of things that were said were really nasty. And there's enough shit going on in the world without throwing more shit at people. And he just kept his cool and he kept his mouth shut, which was taking the high road. And I'm, su I'm super proud to have them on the label that they did such a good job. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's real simple. You're, if you're a fan of music and you're a rock and roll person, there's, there's room for both. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. Don't buy it. It's all cool, whichever side you're on. But to me, the music does the talking. If you want to go and listen to Renegades, you want to listen to the new Checkered Past, I think it's called by the by LA Guns, Tracy's LA Guns, go and buy them both, go and listen to them both and make your own mind up, which you prefer. And that's it. It's as simple as that. They're not running for president. They're just rock and roll guys. They're, 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 they're playing in bands. But I was super proud of the way that Kelly and Steve handled themselves. And I have to say... This second album that you correct, they're recording um, in the recording of the next few weeks, is so incredible because Kelly, who was, I don't know, people, people, some people know, some people don't know, um, he wrote those hits, Ballad of Jane, etc., and he's written some songs for this album that are mind blowing. They all have, but Kelly's stuff, he's an incredible songwriter, and this second album will cement their part in th this legacy it's really super cool so for fans of rock and roll there's something very special about to happen yeah but that, and that's great and uh and yeah they, they did take the high road before i get to i want to let some fans ask some questions but uh and and to start uh what's going on with phil x for those who don't know phil x has a band called the drills they have an album out on golden robot and if you really don't know he is the guitar player for bon jovi so want to know what's going on with Phil. 
Phil's good. I've actually had a meeting with Phil next Thursday. Um, we put a couple of singles out. Phil is always, um, you know, Phil's Bon Jovi's guy. So he's busy with that's of clearly that's going to be his number one. Um, that's going to be his number one um, commitment. He's also playing in another band as well. He plays with somebody else. I can't think of the name of the band. So he's always busy. And guys like him, you know, remember the old Hired Guns movie, the, the Hired Guns, they get paid to play and he yep. needs to go out and play. And, and and so he should. He's an incredible player. But we're meeting next week to discuss the next single singles and the album. So that's all coming up in 2022. Definitely. Okay, yeah. So that's uh, that is it's good. good. You see that comment? Can I read a comment out? Yeah, of course. I, let me know. Um, you see, um, uh, there was one. Yeah, Riley's LA Guns is an awkward name. The vibe is an LA Guns. It should have another right. name. See, I disagree with that because Steve Kiley has been in the band longer than anybody, and he has every right to use that name. And at the end of the day, he was the one that said, okay, well, we'll call it Riley's LA Guns, and they all decided what they wanted to do. And, you know, there's a lot more to it than that, obviously. But I think he had every right to use a, a, a version of the name. Why go and throw away 30 years of history to go and start up something that has no relevance and no 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 throwback to the name? I think he had every right. He's got more right than anyone, Steve, to, to use LA Guns in the name of the band, 100%. He, he, he absolutely does. And sometimes people don't understand business, and that, that's okay. But... He, he, when you say he was there longer, he wasn't there first, but he was in the most lineups. He spent the most times yeah. under the LA Guns name. He, there was no lineup. When Tracy, it was him, it was Phil. He stayed with it forever, and he was also running the business from the, the sidelines. They yeah. trademarked the name together, and if they did that, he has the right to use it. It gets people to like it. You don't have to like Riley's LA Guns. Maybe you don't like the music. Maybe you prefer the other band, and yeah. that's okay. No one's telling you not to. Uh, fans get too worked up over the billing so, of something. Tracy's a Tracy's an awesome guitar player. I I've been at the whiskey a couple of times with Jagger. My son jumped up and played with Tracy. It's on the internet. So I got to know Tracy quite well. I don't think he likes me now because we're the record label on the other side, and that's fair enough. Although I do have a I do have a photo of me and Tracy. And he's wearing a golden rope t shirt. Mm. <laughs> but no, I got no I got no problem with Tracy. I got I don't know Phil, but I got no problem with Tracy at all. I wish him all the best. I wish everyone the best. There's enough out there for everybody. Yeah. Uh, Chris, uh, so anyway, Chris, who made that comment, he's very worked up. He's very excited. He he he's very big Phil Lewis fan, and I. I He's trying to argue that uh, uh, the ba the credits were credited to the five people. The story is that Kelly brought the song in. When you see five names on a song, it's very written, rarely written by five people. I promise you Stephen Allard did not write any songs for Guns N' Roses, but his name is credited. If you think that anyone Warrant wrote a song or anyone Motley Crue wrote a song other than the two people you know, Jenny Lee and Nikki Six, you would be wrong. It's okay to like Phil Lewis. It's okay. Yeah. It, 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 I it, like Phil Lewis. Yeah, I don't. But uh, uh, I did no once. Though. No problem with it. I did once, but I don't. I don't think that he should be uh, uh, not able to make music. He makes his yeah. decision, and there is room for uh, for everybody. I know. I. I. I like some people are uh, upset. Here's a funny one. Imagine if Lars split Metallica. I'd love to see a Lars or Auric Metallica. Yeah, Look, I'd song. yeah. I. I think that even Mark knows that these little things get ridiculous and. I, if you haven't seen the Steve Riley interview uh, for those watching, we should point out this wasn't a real judgment. There was no judge who decided what happened. No, no. There's no victory. No one really wins. In fact, it was a waste of time. You what I like that. about Riley's LA Guns is that, and, and you were behind this as well, is that it always said who was in the band. It was never a mystery. There was a moment there that, and, and Tracy put up that, on, on, and it caused a whole controversy where he put up. Um, it was some legal document that said he owned LA Guns and it was right in the middle of all this. Nothing had been decided yet. And everyone was going, oh, great, you won, you won. Well, Steve had the same document. Steve uh -huh. put it up as well. So it is, listen, it is what it is. As I said, I wish them all the best. I got no issue. I just know what's about to, I just know what they're about to record. And for fans of music, it's awesome. Yeah, and that's what, and we keep getting back to it, but that is what it's about. Okay, so I want to make sure I get some other people's uh, questions. A lot of this we've talked about, uh, which is vinyl and things. And yes, vinyl does take a really long time to make. It started with um, not so many people were doing it. There was only so many plants who could press it. That was your first yeah. problem, right? Yeah. 
who was who's the met who's metal scientist do you know that person he uh, says i think for, for, i used to buy digital albums of google i don't even have a record player well yeah so tell him if he writes into you and he goes and buys a player i'll send him a few albums his first albums can come from golden robot i'll send him a nice couple. look at this so so uh metal scientist uh, I, uh you yeah what a great thing so go get you got to get a record player i get and- it just a tool player get something speak to Jason, and um, I'll send you across some. Uh, I'll send you some LA Guns, the LA Guns album, and I'll send you a few other things. We've got eight of stuff. That sounds like a great deal to me, and uh, and try it out. Maybe you'll really uh, dig it. Listen, I'm kind of a snob myself. I, I I've had the discussion. I have the entire catalog right here on my phone. But there are people who enjoy digital, and uh, and I like I said, I enjoy the collectability of it. So I think there's a. Uh, it's cool that that's happening. Okay, let's see what else we got here because I want to make sure that uh, the people get their questions in. Listen, I know the one uh, that everybody wants, so let's just get right to it. Where, where's King's X? Okay, so the the truth of the King's X story, and it's it's when I say the truth, it's you ask me and I'll tell you. And I've talked about this in public before. When we signed King's X originally, this is like four or five years ago, and they did that original album. The deal was just too expensive. I just felt it was too expensive. And I had a lot of people look at it and said, you're just paying way too much. That's not taking anything away from the band. It's not taking anything away from anyone. We just paid too much, and I just didn't want to go ahead with the deal. And that was it. Yeah, and, and that's... There so is a money business. we paid, which we paid some, we got back, and they were free to go and do what they wanted to do. And we did have... We had a... Um, the record executive that worked with us to build everything up was their point guy and he his contract was up and he was leaving so that was the other reason as well i just didn't think it was uh, i'm not going to say worth the money because i don't like to ever equate a band to money but you know and, and i don't i never have but you know i'm not in this to lose a fortune either because if i lose my ass it's going to affect everybody so at that particular time Jason, three or four years ago, it was not worth it to the company to pursue that deal. The deal was done, but we pulled out because it was just way too much money. And that's the truth of it. it you know, I'm not going to say what it was, but if I said the figure, people will go, oh, fuck, I think you're right. I don't think you'd ever make that. Right. Back. However, if it was today, because we're in a completely different financial situation today than when you are when you started, um, that would be a different story. That would be a completely different story. But that was definitely the right decision for the day because not only did I save my money there and let me get another four or five well-established bands that we did pay for their albums, and that really set us up. So I'm very happy with that decision. And, you know, I think it was the right decision because, you know what, that album still hasn't come out. Yeah. So we would we would have potentially been in trouble because you want to get a return and I, I would have been waiting three or four years for that. And when you're starting and, you you know, you're fueling the jet, you don't, you know, you, you, you've got to make sure things come out and consistent. So that it was just a financial decision. Simple as that. I love them. I think they're, I think they're awesome. I don't, man, I've never seen someone drink margaritas like Doug. Doug told me the best story ever, um, ever once he said to me, because, you know, he's, he's doing this every night, right, every night on base, um, and he can drink and drink and drink and he still gets it right. He said to me, because in America, they, don't, they do it differently but in, in Australia. But in America, you know how you do the sobriety test if you're dr- driving drunk and they here you blow in the, you know, you've got to blow into like a tube in this little computer on the side of the road. Well, remember in America, do you still do it where you do these? You know, you do these. I so think you, they still do. I think you do that and the breathalyzer. I think yeah. you do. Well, you touch your nose. Is, yeah. Doug said to me, oh, I can drive everywhere I want. I can drink what I want because this is what I do on stage every night anyway. No matter how drunk I am, I can still do that. And I yeah. thought that was brilliant. So I'm still friends with them all. There's no issue. It's just a financial decision. I don't know if they signed with anybody else. I don't know what happened. But um, uh, you know what? Let me tell you something, mate. I'm buying out labels all the time. I'm involved in different things all the time. Who knows? Watch this space. Anything could happen. Yeah. And I wish I- the rest and I think what you're saying makes sense. Listen, it's a it's a nice thing to have a press release that you sign somebody. It's nice to have those a roster, but at that point you did have to protect yourself. You could have yeah. went under just on one uh, on one thing, and so like that, mate, like that. Yeah, and so especially in that uh, building stage. Okay, the other question, and I, and I see some good questions from fans, but the other question everyone wants to know. I hear this constantly. What about John Sykes? He promised okay. us music. What happened? Look, I'm still waiting. 
I'm still When's waiting. the last time you talked to John Sykes? A, a, a while, and we're, we're trying to, you know, negotiate back in there. I love John. I He's got a love of cars like I have. I mean, me, meeting him, I've had many dinners with him in L.A. Um, uh, I love John. I think John is an awesome guy. He's an incredible guitarist. One of my favourite albums of all time is that 1987 White Snake album. I mean, that that solo and Still of the Night is just probably number one for me. I, I'm like you. I've got everything signed all over the walls everywhere. And I've got, you know, to mark john sykes on the, on that album i'm still waiting i paid my money and i'm still waiting Let me just okay leave. so so we I'm do hoping. have well, there is hope then right oh yeah oh there's hope i i've paid listen i'm not the kind of guy that says oh fuck you i'm going to court i'm getting my lawyers under i'm not I'm, I, look i can and i have but in this particular instance i'm not interested in that i've, I've paid my money even if i just get a couple of singles to start with or whatever it is i, I i'm i'm hopeful one day the investment that I have made um, will come back. Um, again, it was very early days, so it's been a while, and I'm being extremely diplomatic. But at the end of the day, you know, I've paid for product and I still expect it. And I'm pretty sure I'll get it. I reckon just keep an eye on 2022. Um, don't write us off thinking there won't be something new from John. I love John. Yeah, I got to get I got to get John Sykes on the show now. It's not going to be easy, but... I'll work. Good. You get John Sykes on the show. I'll ask him I'll, where the. I'll, I'll tell you who I'm working with. I'm working with, and he's going to do. He's doing an album for us um, this year or next year. Tony Franklin, who was with oh, John yes. in Blue Murder, etc. He's awesome. What an awesome guy. Yeah, they can't get that Blue Murder together. I had Carmine on the show. What's funny is all of these guys are on your label: Tony yeah. Franklin, yeah. Carmine, a piece of with yeah. Vanilla Fudge, yeah. and then John Sykes with the new MIA project. Yeah. Um, and so it's funny that you got the three of them, but yet we can't get them together because people want Blue Murder music. Listen, there's so, there's so many bands like that on the label. There's like, you know, Elvis, uh, so Priscilla Presley's son is in a band, Them Guns. Um, Gary Beers from In Excess is in Ash and Moon. Um, there's all these interesting connections all around a few of these bands. Well, it, it's funny you say Priscilla Presley, uh, son is in a band called Them Guns. I, I hope that they're not going to get sued and have to call it Riley's Them Guns. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, your, now here, your manager, just as a side thing, is Doug Goldstein, ex Guns N' Roses. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's a good question from Jennifer, and she'd like to know: Do the bands find the labels themselves online, or do you go out and find bands at concerts or venues? And this is a great question: How does an artist find a label, or how does the label find the artist? Both, both. Um, we've got quite a big A and R department, and we get something like four hundred something uh, demos submissions a week. Um, and I don't want to be one of those labels that are just dickheads and don't answer people back and you can't call us and you can't do this and you can't do that. So I'm very, um, I'm very, um, you know, we, we make sure we speak to everyone. Even if it's not for us, we make sure we communicate. We keep, you know, we spreadsheet everything so we know who's applied, submissions, et cetera. But, yeah, that's crazy. We get approached a lot and we find a lot of bands. I, I'm looking and our A&R guys in America, Europe and here are looking all the time all the time at um uh bands were approach we approach bands bands approach us there's plenty of stuff the biggest stuff obviously i go to management i'm talking some very big bands at the moment with um uh, representation in the uk for example so i'm talking to them to do the deal that's not with the band it's with management but it's all sorts but it's it, you should if someone's in a band this is the other thing if you are going to go onto a label or you want a label to get your attention don't try and get hold of them on social media by sending them DMs on Instagram. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, Mark, yeah. that's a – you give a good lesson. We can give some people some good music advice. I've been in the management business. Yeah. The, the, and, you know, I used to read scripts also as well uh, yeah. for, for movies. And yeah. a lot of times the script would not come in the right format. Yeah. And that's an automatic toss if it's not proper. And, uh, and, so, and then sometimes things are just really bad. With yeah. music, it's the same thing. There is a way, an etiquette to do things, and sometimes the artist thinks that they have the next best thing, and in their heart, they probably believe it. But boy, the people hit me up with the next best thing, and it is bad. And I yeah. know that that happens with you too. That doesn't mean we should tell them uh, not to make music, although sometimes I wish I would. Uh, but it is uh, you, there is an etiquette to do it. Yeah, going on social media, badgering people will not make your your band be seen any faster. 100%. Um, okay, so let's see. And now uh, 
you know, they, uh, people enjoying the Vanilla Fudge records, and Vanilla Fudge has been doing some really fun marketing. This is a band that appeared on the Ed Sullivan show. Ed Sullivan show. That's how long it's Vanilla the Fudge. Band was. that we got the music on to um, um, Quentin Tarantino's last movie. Uh, right. Um, well, hot, um, Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yeah, and the best scene in the movie where Brad Pitt throws that can, and the Vanilla Fudge song comes on. So that was well, that was spoiler a alert, Mark. You got to say spoiler. <laughs> No, what do you mean? The that song's been out, the out. The movie's been out for three years. You never know. Yeah, you know yeah, you never it. But no, it's a, it is a great scene, and it's great that yeah. that song and it's a is in that movie. And these are the things that uh, keep uh, keep going. Okay, so uh, I asked you about Gilby. Uh, um, you know, Gilby's got yeah. a pretty new record, and yeah. uh, somehow Gilby got lost in the shuffle. He was going to do an interview with me, and somehow they never got back to me. And then I said, I'm not going to have him on. I'm having, I'm, unless Izzy Stradlin comes on, but I'm willing to forgive, forgive Gilby and, uh, uh, and have him a, on. Like, Gil, Gilby is just the nicest guy. Gilby is, um, yeah, he's just a lovely guy. It took a couple of years to put it all together, but he really believed in Golden Robots from the very early days. But he sort of stopped doing interviews lately only because. You know, anything he says, every, everyone wants to always talk about Guns and Roses, but then yes. anything he says can either get taken out of context or gets taken, and then it ends up on blabbermouth or brave words or something, as that's all that was talked about with this big headline. And it's not the case. And I actually feel sorry for him because it keeps getting, you know, it keeps getting taken out of context. It got exhausted a little bit. And I even yeah. felt that. I said, by the time I interviewed the guy, there is nothing left to talk about. I could do an hour about candy, but. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's tough because and and it's it, it's a shame that people go only for clickbait. Um, I can't tell you how yeah. many artists I've had on, yeah. And I see a headline like Stephen Piercy is tragically dying. It's not true. I talk yeah. to him every day. You know, it's yeah. things like that. It's a shame that people spin it. Um, he, his album's great, and I and I urge people to go and listen to it. We're going to do it on vinyl next year. Him and I are talking at the moment about doing something down in Mexico potentially next year with a. With, a, with an older album, um, redoing it live. And he's just a great guy. He's got a lovely life. He's got um, great family. He plays live when he wants to play, does his motorbikes up. He just right into his Harleys. He rides all around America. He's a really, really nice guy. He's a love, he's a, you know, they, I say there's a few people, you know, the nicest guys in rock and roll and Gilby, Steve Stevens, those kind of guys, they're all just nice guys. And you know what? That's why they survived. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so I got to tell you, Hot Chell Ray, yeah. this is a different thing. Uh, it's, it's a kind of a pop rock band. Mm -hmm. 100%. And, but I got to tell you, uh, that song, Tonight, uh, tonight, right? It, this is the tonight, catchiest yeah. song ever. I like a good song that has the words, whoa, whoa, whoa in them. You can't listen to that song and not be singing it. I know that back, uh, in, they opened for Taylor Swift in Australia. Yeah. And I know that they built a really good um, Mate, I'll these guys, you're talking about bands that have done well um, um, uh, on, on from Spotify. These guys have done really well. And, you know, they were being chased by majors. And that's that's another good thing about Golden Rover is because I own it all and we finance it all and there's, you know, no board of directors and no dickheads involved. I can make decisions quickly. I can pivot quickly. I can do things quickly. And really, I chased them for a while. They had, a, you know, we can talk about bad management for a long time. Um, but they had the, one of their earlier, well, one of the managers I was dealing with just never returned phone calls and he left. And I was trying to negotiate a deal for six months and then they got a guy called Rob um, Roy, who's awesome, and he rang me because he checked old emails. He said, are you still interested? And I said, absolutely. They had Warners and Sony and a whole lot of majors chasing them. And I said, look, let's do something different. Let's put your music out, but let's own the label together because these guys are big guys. These guys, are, these guys sell music. So we ended up starting up on our, uh, and they loved it. So we did a deal. They um, we started up a label called Yama Records, which is under our group, and we all own it together. And their new EP is coming out under Yama. Um, they, we just released their single, uh, which has gone really great the last few weeks, and then a new one comes out I think February, and then the EP will drop, and then they'll do an album. But the best thing about this, Jason, is not only will they put their own music out through Yama, which is my first real foray into pop music, and what a what, uh, no better band than Hot Shell Ray, but they're going to A and R that label. So there's going to be all these young bands that they've always wanted to put the music out or produce, etc. They're going to put it out under Yama Records, 
Um, so that's really exciting for 2022 that we'll have this slew of bands that they've found that we're going to put out the music for. Yeah, I think it's also very good for your label to have those different divisions because you can't have every uh, band of the same genre. It, 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 it just it, you'll get lost in the shuffle. So Hot Shell Ray does something different, and, you can, and they're so they're involved, and so you can have something different. Another band that's different is Filter. Uh, yep. Filters on the label, and and uh, yep. that reaches a different audience as well. Totally, Richard's a great guy. I mean, you know, he's a hall of famer. He's just just he's a lovely guy to deal with. He's got his own strong views on the world. I love that. Um, the new music's coming out next year, and it's awesome. He's on, funny enough, Hot Shell Ray and Filter. I've got songs on that Rock for Myanmar soundtrack that we just dropped um, to support Myanmar, which has just come out. Which is, a, I think, the Filter song is actually unreleased. It's called Thoughts and Prayers. Um, but, yeah, so lovely. Yeah, again, different. It's like people say to me all the time, oh, you know, Golden Robot, the main label, was very much like Jimmy did with Interscope. Jimmy Iovine did with Interscope where you had, you know, Nine Inch Nails and No Doubt and and um, uh, Enrique Suave. You had all these different bands, and we're very much like that on the main label. You've got, you know, David Miniasian, which is, you know, this prog rock guy next to Filter, next to, the, you know, Riley's LA Guns next to the answer next to johnny thunders oh we got to talk about johnny thunders i, I just segued you into it you just grab you seg- it yeah you segued me into that one so johnny thunders is one of my all-time heroes uh uh for his music not necessarily the way he lived but uh and i so i get press releases from uh a publicist referring me to some releases from golden robot records there's a lot of artists that i'm not familiar with on my show i usually uh, have more established people, although, uh, you know, you and I have been talking about sort of changing that, maybe introducing people to some bands that they might have yeah. missed. I think uh, we can have a good relationship doing that. But Definitely. whenever I see a Johnny Thunders uh, press release, I think, how do I get behind this? And uh, how do I find anyone who is involved with Johnny Thunders? Because it's not easy. Uh, tell me how Johnny Thunders uh, and Golden Robot comes together. So without boring everyone with the story, um it was in, really interesting. So we were involved with another label that we're not involved with anymore. And somebody came, it was a nephew or a cousin or somebody came to this um, this label and wanted to do a deal to release a the Mud, mud I think the Mud Club, um, uh, it was Johnny Thunders and, um, what's the name of the band? Johnny Thunders. It's got his name the band. Johnny Thunders... I'm just looking it up. Uh, yeah, Costa, no- Co- Costa Nostra, right? right? So there was this performance at the Mud Club in Sweden, June 1983. And he came, they did a contract, and uh, he just wanted, you know, X, Y, Z for it, whatever he wanted. And we went, great. So on the day we put out the press release, uh, I remember I was away, and we got this stern lawyer's letter from the Johnny Hunter's estate saying old mate had no right to um uh put anything yeah so okay so i thought well okay you know we took it down and it's a you know what fuck this i'm gonna try and get it let's try and get it we had the masters anyway um they reckon they had ownership over it so long story short i did a deal with the estate um brought it across to gold robot it took a little bit of time did a deal with the estate for that album and we've just only dropped a couple of singles. That whole album is still going to come out in 22. I am going to do that on vinyl, and I'll get you a copy of that. I'll send you across a numbered copy. I can't promise I can have it autographed. Yeah, that might be <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I'll get it across to you. Um, and that was it. And the guy that originally came to deal, he was given a couple of bucks, and he was happy, and everyone moved on, and that's how that – but the other exciting part is, is now that that relationship is there, there's actually some other unreleased stuff that we've got that's coming through. Yeah, which is which is great. And I think that young people are discovering Johnny Thunders every day. I think yeah. some of the bands that they idolized, they didn't realize a lot of them were uh, really influenced by, yeah. by Thunders. And his estate and things are it, have always been in a bit of a disarray. He's got some sons. He's got a daughter. There, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a mess at times. Um, so I'm looking at some of these questions. Uh, yes, all uh, four of the New York Dolls are dead. Uh, yes. David Johansson is the only one yeah. who is alive. Um, 
The question, who's in filter besides Richard Patrick? I don't know if you – do you know? Do you need anyone other than Richard Patrick? In I kind of was thinking the same thing. Yeah. Um, he thinks who he wants. He, he, he revolves different people, but you only need Richard. He's the best. You should yes, hear this. Thing. It's a, uh, we'll get him on here. You'd love to talk to him for a while. Yes, I really would like to have him on. I think yeah. it's interesting, and I like to – uh, brought in the, my horizons on the show as well. So, uh, but let me tell you, one of the records on your label that I think is the best I've heard, and I mean this, is uh, Dizzy Reed. Yeah. This Dizzy Reed record for me, I mean this, and I, I mean, I, I know Dizzy, but, uh, and I've told him this, rock and roll ain't easy. I believe that this is the best solo record of a member in Guns N' Roses. I'm telling you that I think it's better than those Slash records with Miles Kennedy and Miles Kennedy's cousins and Miles Kennedy's friends and Slash's cousins. For sure. I don't, For sure. I, it's, I, to me, it's Slash trying to be hip, whatever. Yep. Duff's records, I love the guy. I don't like his records. Um, but this Dizzy Reed record, if you want, it's probably better than some stuff you've been hearing from Guns N' Roses. I recommend people check it out. It's a lost record. Um, we did a party here in Las Vegas with Dizzy D uh, guest DJ. And before the record was out, he played a couple of the tracks. I remember saying, wow, this is really um, good stuff. He was having a hard time getting it out, you know, getting it out to the people. And I'm so glad you got it. But I, I, for anyone watching, if you like rock and roll and you like Guns N' Roses and yeah, you like, yeah. you know, yeah. Stones and, and all those things, I, I, I recommend that record. Dizzy's involved a couple of bands on the label like Obviously, that his first solo album, album. and, and um, uh, there's some beauties on there, like there's some incredible singles on there. I would, and we've still got that available in vinyl. But his hook is and blow album that he did with Alex Crossy for quite right just recently came out, and that's on vinyl as well. Uh, that's yeah. incredible. That's an incredible album. With um, a, I mean, it's a, it's a covers album, but the way they do some of the album, uh, some of the songs is fantastic. So now D Dizzy's super talented. He's a super nice guy. And I tell you who's the nicest guy, the, that Alex Grossi, he's a lovely guy. He's yeah. got to be up there as well. He did all the, the promo for Hookers and Blow. He couldn't have been more uh, understanding and more available. He's a lovely, lovely guy. He lives he, uh, he lives here in Las Vegas as well, yeah. and, uh, and he plays with uh, uh, Quiet Riot. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to get everyone's, and then you know, you have to skim through the nonsense. But uh, here's a good one. Uh, anything going on with Jefferson Starship? Uh, yeah, well, they just released the um, they released through us uh, the album, uh, last I think it was, um, I think it was the end of last. God, I, I, lo I lose track of time. That were they, they released. The album, I think, yeah, end of last year or beginning of this year, Mother of the Sun. Actually, it's probably 2020, Mother of the Sun. That did exceptionally well. They're about to go on a massive tour. If not, they're on a massive tour around America and then they're going to Europe and they've got, I don't know if it's been announced. I, I won't say who it is, but they've got a big band they're about to go out with. I don't know if it's been announced yet. I just heard it from management, but they're doing a big European tour with another big band. Um but it's about time that single in 2020 did really well. They're a good band. Same management as Riley's LA Guns. And for people who may be confused, uh, who, who the hell is in Jefferson Starship? Um, good question. I shouldn't have put you on the spot. Uh, no, no, no. Good question. It's um, um, it's not um, Mickey Thomas. It's the other. No, no, no. It's um, yeah. You put me on the spot. I can't. I, I mean, you know any bands? I've got. I'm trying to. No, no they're no, touring I, with Journey. I don't know if it's Journey. I mean, I know. Who um, I know who they're uh, they could be Journey, but that's not that's not the band. Um, uh, I would think of Kathy Richardson is the lady's name. I'm thinking Kathy. I'm uh, Paul Gold. God, Paul Paul's in on guitar. He's one of great um, Gilby's best mates. Uh, yeah. Paul, uh, Kathy, um, they're, yeah, they're a good bunch of people. Really good, really really professional. Yeah. So okay. So yeah. And so uh, I believe it's Paul Cantner. I believe. I could be wrong. Yeah, no, Paul. Yeah, yes, but Paul got. Is it Paul Gold that's on guitar? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. We're, I think so. He's we're, throwing, um, we're throwing poor. Uh, we're throwing poor. Uh, uh, yeah, Jefferson Paul Gold. I think okay. Paul. Anyway, listen, people, people. This is why they have Google. That um, 
Yeah, go on to Google. Yeah, no, Grace Slick is not part of it. No. Grace Slick is not, right? That much we know. Warrior Soul would be good on this label. That's a good point. Listen, I think you guys should make your suggestions. Warrior Soul is one of those bands that uh, still has a loyal following. And uh, Warrior see. Soul. Yeah. See, now you guys are getting a direct. Oh, Paul Cantner's dead. <laughs> Whoops. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we've ruled out Grace Slick and we've ruled out Paul Cantner. You see how this works? We're doing good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, but if you have suggestions, listen, my suggestion, a great band, and I don't know where they are record wise, and I'm going to contact them uh, is a, a resistant by I told you about it privately. This is a band featuring Tommy Skio of Tesla. I've had them on the show. They were having a little bit of a hard time finding distribution. I don't know where they're at right now, but uh, this is a great record. This is a really, Which really good that? record. Yeah. Resist and bite. And I like, I can't begin to tell you how many people listen to it and like it. it it's very rare that we find an audience mm. that uh, that everyone likes. I, I, I mm. I'm, it shocks me. Someone just um, said who's the best selling artist. I mean, they all sell well. I mean, that as I said, that LA Guns album was the best since they did the the first one. Filter does very well. Gilby did well. Jefferson Starship killed it. The Answer, the Irish band's got a new album out next year. Hot Shell Ray kill it. Vanilla Fudge speaks for itself. So does Dizzy. Got some great bands out of Sweden, Hardcore Superstar, Crash Diet, etc. They do very well. Phil X does well. Jizzy Pearls Love and Hates, these singers. Yeah, I can't really believe well. I'm forgetting Jizzy, good friend of mine. And Jizzy's been yeah. on the show a bunch of times. Jizzy's always making great music. Uh VHF, Tony Franklin, Joel Hoekstra from White Snake and, and Vinny on drums. Um, Smash Gladys, the old New York band. Uh -huh. that, I remember that them. Mean Simmons um produced their music's out with us. Um Bands in Mexico, Johnny Nasty Boots, Mountain Eye from Europe, lots of UK bands. I tell you who we signed. You're talking about connections, connections. Um, Chloe Trillo and Rav Medic, who's Mark from Australian Guy. Chloe's Rob's um, wife from Metallica. Mm -hmm. She's got a single out, a killer single. That's She's right. I saw, it. I saw the release about that. and It was really interesting. That's something that I'd like to talk about more on the show as well. You know, here in America, we think that we're the biggest, uh, uh, you know, we're everything. I'm from New York City. I, I, so now, you know, I got double the attitude. But Golden Robots is really an international record label. Oh, yeah. But there's we're bands talking, everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. We're talking about some of the ones that it had a brand already, but there are so many. And, and things like Crash Diet that I want to talk about more on my show because they have got such a history um, and Tobias Forge, who, uh, you know, from the band Ghost was in Crash Diet yeah. at one point. Yeah. There's a whole a whole history to those guys. They were playing glam for quite some time, but they're bigger overseas. Hardcore Superstar is another one that people uh, love, people are really passionate yeah. about. They're a huge band, but that's it, the thing. It's like in Australia, you know, you know how Big Filter is was in America. Now, mm -hmm. now in Australia, he wasn't as big, so not many people know about Filter, but in America they do. So in different regions, so I mean, we've signed, we've signed a band called Hurricane Number no. 1, now, in the UK, they were nearly as big as Oasis at one point in the 90s. They're doing a new album right now. So, yeah, Jude Gold. Did I say Paul Gold? That's my cousin. <laughs> well, <laughs> shout out to cousin called Paul Gold. Jude Gold. I, I said Paul Gold. Yeah, Jude Gold. I was thinking of Paulie. He's, yeah, he's got 400 <laughs> bands, which is like, you know, uh, my math's not so good, but like 20,000. I'm got, I got managers coming out, my gazoo they look after. I mean, I'm involved in everything, but. Now and then I get, um, I get, I, I don't know, I don't know. Well, Jude I know Gold is going to send you a nasty fax. Jude Gold, I like Jude. We did a, you know, I do a lot of interviews and things. We did a conversations with or a seven minute max or something, and he came on with his guitar, Jude Gold. I can't believe I said Paul Gold. I swear to you, Paul Gold. If it would have been fourteen minutes, you would, have, you would have remembered him. I know it was. It was like twenty minutes. It was seven minute max. It's on my. It's on our internet. You'll see it, Jude Gold. I have to ring Paul and go, I just talked about you on live TV, on live um, podcast. Yeah, you know, I've learned live is a dangerous thing. I've learned it uh, because you have technology and then, you know, some of these things you 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 uh, are easier when you prearrange. I really think that um, there's good things ahead for Golden Robot. And I do think that you've done a great job at getting the name out. We, you know, we knew the names of the other labels. A lot of them have come and gone. And I, I'm around artists all the time who were on some of those labels, and there, there's been a lot of disappointment. A lot of people, some people had money issues, obviously, uh, you know, were not getting paid. And then there's other people 
who really got lost in the shuffle. And that's the hardest thing. Um, I could tell you about a band. I don't want to say too much, but uh, I was working with the band Winger, which is a you know great, successful 80s hard rock band. And their label put out their record and Sebastian Bach's record on the same day. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, it made no sense. And it yeah. upset a lot of people on both sides. It, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have two similar, you know, similar enough artists. At least they have similar fans. Yeah. And boy, was it disappointing. And I think um, that to have someone like you who is hands-on um, helps. And we, we need someone where we go, okay, well, I trust the music from there. I can get it easily. I can go to these websites. And, uh, you know, as we touched on briefly, there will be more involvement on, on the business and management side from you um, as well. Because it's, I think nowadays it's not enough just to be um, a label. Uh, because yeah. – and, not, and most people can't afford to have 20 people. They sort yeah. of need a place that they can do it. Well, I've enjoyed this. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to get to everyone's questions, but some of these things, like, Mark, I answer this question about Vito Brada every week, you know, uh, from White Lion. The guy is the ultimate recluse. He lives in Staten Island. He's taking care of uh, his, yeah. his, his, his ailing uh, parent. And um, and he has some problems with his hands, and he's not sure that he can play at the level that he did before. So he's not sure he wants to go out again. So, but I, anyway, but fans are passionate, and I get it, and they want to see him on the show, and they want to see Warren D. Martini on the show, who also really doesn't want it, would rather not talk, uh, you know, until there's something to talk mm -hmm. about. And um, so, anyway, I want to make sure. That people check out uh, Golden Robots. You know, that, uh, ro yeah, that's the easiest Golden Robot. That's the easiest thing you can do is yeah, go to robotrecords.com. And then you know, someone said, "Where do I send demos?" Just go to the contact page, and you'll see where to send everything, and it'll it'll get it'll get through to us. But um, listen, we're going to do more of this next year, you and I. We'll do yes, I, I I look forward to it. And then then you know, I'll tease that we we're going to have an announcement. You and I are going to have an announcement next year. There's some exciting stuff coming up for, for people who like this show, for people who like my music, for people who like what you guys do. Um, and like I said, one of my goals in the new year for people watching is to introduce you to some different music, um, not just the guys that were already made it, but maybe some people who are the next to make it and maybe some people yeah. who are international. Let's turn people on to some really good music. I know that people think music is dead. You know, that's a thing to say. But there's more music now than there's ever been, and it's easier to get. You have no excuse if you're not listening to new music. Uh, and there's bad music. There always has been. There, sure. there, that, that you're never going to get perfect uh, uh, music. You got to look a little harder, but it's easy to find. And uh, and I hope that together we can uh, um, expose people to that. The question, what happened to John Sykes? You can go back and watch. Go back and listen. I explained it. Um and I think that's important in, in stuff we do next year. We should talk about bands that um, aren't um, uh, aren't known, you know, Cavalcade, San Quentin, um, The Now, The Chase, these kind of bands in the UK. People should be checking out because they are the new breed of rockers coming through in the UK, for example. Yes, we're going to sign City, Sin City Rejects. That's that's a no-brainer. That's That's done. And I'm serious. We are. We're going to put your music out next year. That's done. We, well, well, that is, yeah. And so we we can definitely let people know that you know when I made the Sin City Rejects record with Scotty Griffin of Riley's LA Guns and Johnny yeah. Rocks, who played with Bay City Rollers, he played with Cher, he played. With, he was in the Great Kin Band. We uh, we did this thing kind of for fun, but now that the show has taken off, people have uh, asked me where do I get a physical copy, and Golden Robot Records is going to be the answer to that to make 100%. some really cool uh, limited things. And there's great people on that record. Johnny Kelly from Typo Negative, uh, Richie Ramone of the Ramones, um, Tiny Bioso who was in TUSL and the Dickies. And uh, and if you wanted to know where uh, uh, Vito Brada is, he just tipped $5 super sticker. That's where Vito yeah, Brada is. Yeah, he's so Maybe. he's... And everyone else about uh, John Sykes on the milk carton missing and John Sykes. I'm gonna work on getting John Sykes on this show. I don't think it's gonna go very well. Uh, it, 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 just as Adrian Vandenberg hasn't gone that well, but I'm going to work on it so that we can get people their interest. And again, um, in the new year, uh, what do you see? Uh, last question. What do you see changing? What can we do? Because the pandemic has stopped artists 
It's starting to get artists playing again. What do we have to look forward to uh, as far as getting music out in the new year? As in what music is coming out? No, I, I, we know the, not the artists. I'm saying what can we do that's going to be different that, you know, get people to hear music? I think um, I think that the, the, you're talking about the fan listening to music. But, I, you know, it's both. But I think, yeah, to, to, what, what do we have to look forward to? Because we've had a year of not having much to look forward to. We couldn't well, get You're going to have a lot of live stuff next year. You're going to be going and seeing a lot more concerts. I mean, for example, Guns N' Roses cancelled Australia last month but are going to be here in 2022, November, October, November, I think it is. So there is going to be a lot more live music next year and accessibility to bands is going to be a lot more as far as um, buying their product, getting their product. The the vinyl will start catching up on itself. The CD will start catching up on itself, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you'll find that there'll be a lot more, things will be a lot more accessible, a lot more accessible to see the band, hear the band, et cetera, et cetera, definitely. Yeah, and listen, you also have marketing strategies that you, you're not willing to uh, reveal just yet, and that makes uh, that, that that makes sense. So, anyway, Mark, thank you so much for joining me again. This is just the beginning. We're going to bring you a lot of music together and uh, and promote, uh, and and that's the bottom line is getting music um, out to everyone. So, I thank you for joining me, and uh, you and I will chat again real soon, and uh, and we'll get more of your artists on the yeah, show as well definitely we might get some of them on while i'm on with you and i and I, I wanted to thank you i want to thank you for what um um you do for the scene um uh and i want to thank you for i want to thank your audience your audience is really um is really cool they're really interactive and they're really part of what's going on and you know we're all okay what i do what you do but without the fans buying the albums or buying the music it's 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 nothing so thank you to all your fans and thank you to you mate you do a fantastic job and it's going to be an honor to be involved with you a lot more next year thank you mark i really appreciate that and uh i, I like to work with like-minded people who also sort of uh, uh get it i i think authenticity is what's valuable i got a I'm smart sorry. i've got a smart audience they yeah, you know they, they see through bullshit they don't want me to come on here and be the morning drive dj you know telling wacky stories they like that it's real and if i tell them that i heard a record and i really like the record that i'm not just selling the record i believe in what i'm talking about and uh, introducing people and i know it's the same with you you're not putting labels bands on your label for the hell of it no 100 percent. and you know what at the end of the day you know like like De was it deja blue just said thanks for your passion you have to be passionate because there's times when you know you're looking at stuff and you go oh fuck, how did that go wrong or you know how do i overcome that or whatever you've got to be passionate all the way because you know what it doesn't matter if things are shit you're going to listen to music and it's going to make you feel better and if you, things are great you're going to listen to music and it's going to take you to another level so music to me is everything so it's just amazing to be able to be part of something someone like you that's just passionate and authentic and genuine someone like me that can bring you the albums and listening to your incredible audience that is buying them and is into music like we are it's awesome mate so thank you very much again Thank you so much, Mark. Again, we're, we're going to talk again uh, very soon. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Oops, sorry, I cut him off. But And thank you for everyone who tuned in. I know uh, it's the holiday season and people have other things uh, going on. Everyone's busy, and uh, it, but it is uh, really good to talk to somebody who is trying their best to keep music alive because we are at a time when uh, – and yeah, and so we'll, we'll, I'll put links for all Mark's things in the uh, – in the description after that and and again we will be looking forward to a lot of new things in 2022 uh you know i always felt like i only know how to promote some an artist that's already established but they've got a lot of our uh, bands on there that we you know maybe we can all help uh, spread the word because obviously we're all here for our common um love of music and uh and i will also mention uh interviews coming soon in case you tuned in late uh, this Friday, Johnny Monaco of Enough's Enough. Um, he also, uh, uh, my Patreons have already watched it. They've already got that interview. They watched it without any ads, and they watched it in the privacy of their own, own home, own home, as opposed to people who were um, watching it uh, in an a Asian bathhouse. Um, I think I'm getting a speech impediment in my old age. I've been having some trouble. The week after that, G. Tom Mack, 
who um, wrote and performed the song Cry Little Sister from the Lost Boy soundtrack. He's got a movie coming out. Uh, uh, excuse me. He's got a, a musical coming out um, about the Lost Boys called The Lost Boys Story. That music's available now. You can listen to that. Also coming soon, Ron Thomas from The Karate Kid in Cobra Kai, Cher Ross from Fixin, and uh, Rob Afuso from Skid Row. Rob Afuso is the most difficult person to pin down to do this. Uh, he's coming. but uh, And then as we talk about Kelly Nichols from Riley's Elegance, I appreciate you guys all being here. Uh, make sure you like and you comment and you subscribe and all those things and interact uh, with the channel so that we can continue to do this. And I, uh, I like to get doing it on a regular basis. This was a new thing, having a guest uh, with us. I know usually we just kind of shoot the shit and uh, I think it, it was fun. I think it went well. And again, uh, I'll, I will also be in the chat Friday live at uh, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and hold on, I'll answer this before I go. What about the Demals guy? That's an interesting question. So I had Billy McCarthy on from Demals. And uh, some of the things we talked about, we um, legally shouldn't have talked about. And so I have to edit the video uh, a lot because some of the things even though most of what we discussed was public record, there is a, um, a gag order, and I'm not saying anything out of school. And so I want to make sure that that interview comes out uh, appropriate. So uh, and thank you for remi reminding me. I got some editing to do. This is a a one man uh, a one man show. So anyway, he will be there, and I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out all night. Join me Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will be in the chat, Johnny Monaco. It's an hour and a half interview, and it, I promise you it is uh, it is funny. I'm trying to read. Speaking of funny, I'm trying to read your questions. But Long Friend would be interesting. Long Friend lives here in uh, Las Vegas. I, I know him. I haven't seen him in a while. He's a nice guy, and he would probably make for a, a, a good uh, good interview. So... I'm trying to get to last second questions, but um, I think you guys all want to get back to your families or get away from your families. Uh, so anyway, until we uh, talk next, thank you for watching.